Box Elder School District School Board Meeting, 6.30 p.m. December 8th, 2021. Yeah. This is last night, so we'll see. Oh, that would be, okay. Well, we'll see what's Do you guys want to sign this? Okay, well, welcome to our school board meeting. We call this meeting to order. Um, I see we have a bunch of scouts here. Welcome. I'm excited to see you, and I have some that I know personally. So, <laughs> welcome to our board meeting tonight. Hope you can learn something, and we appreciate you taking your time to be here. Um, so, citizenship of the community merit badge? Is that what? Communication. Communication. Excellent. We'll try that. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> so we're going to begin, I guess I should speak into this, huh? yeah. um, we're going to begin with our, no we're not, he's not here, here. so, oh, he's, sorry, Gary, Gary's had a cold for two or three days. Okay, so excuse Gary, and we're also, Tiffany is absent tonight as well, just make a note of that, that she had a family commitment, and so she won't be here as well. Nancy. Yes, Nancy will do our reverence, and then Karen, um, We'll do our flag salute, Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father in Heaven, we're so very grateful for the opportunity we have meeting at the school board meeting, and particularly for this festive time of year. We're so very grateful for the opportunity we have to connect better with our fellow man and to help those around us as we strive to provide Christmas cheer and spirit to the many people with whom we work and serve. We're so very grateful for our teachers, for our students, for our administrators and those that work so hard to help our students grow and progress. We ask now that thy spirit will be with us. Please help us as we study the issues and work on the policy of the district that we will be guided to do the best that we can for those with whom we work. And this we pray for in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Nancy and Karen. Um, tonight, we're going to have, we have a recognition. Um, uh, Connie's going to read that recognition for us. As of the 6th of December, there was a press release that came um, from the Utah High School Activities Association. It was um, something that I sure would have, uh, I do so much support, and that is um, they recognized um, our very own Wade Walton as the Music Educator of the Year at Bear River High School. Wade, would you please stand? <laughs> Tiffany has written a really nice uh, tribute to Mr. Walton, and it goes as follows. The Box Elder School District Board of Education and Leadership Team would like to congratulate you for being <clears throat> awarded the Utah High School Activities Association 2021 Music Educator of the Year, and may I say, it's long overdue. I added that. This award honors you as an outstanding contributor to the Utah High School activities, and we want to join the UHSAA in recognizing your outstanding work with our students at Bear River High School. Mr. Walton, you have a gift of connecting with students. Is that valuable? Absolutely. And inspiring them to give their very best effort. We recognize that it takes a very organized, dedicated, and multi-talented professional to teach 21 sections of choir, band, orchestra, and guitar classes. Your madrigals, band, jazz band, and marching band students are excellent performers, and it's obvious that these students are having an incredibly positive experience participating in these groups. Thank you for your time and your effort, and the effort you give to your students and the music program at Bear River High School. With sincere appreciation, congratulations, the Board of Education and Bob Delper District Leadership Team. Thank you, Mr. Wong. Want to 
give him that letter. We normally, would, if they're not here, we mm -hmm. send it. But since you're here, you can just have the person see it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. That's Thank a wonderful you honor. We really appreciate cool. what you're doing for our students. And that's amazing. Picture for the camera or for the newspaper. Can, can I make another recognition? Our school board member is the Sterling Scholar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mr. Walton, can I ask you a question? Please. Did I hear you do band, jazz band, cor choir, madrigals? Like yeah. you're, you're one and man guitar. And, and guitar. guitar yeah. and, and, and guitar. I don't do the orchestra. You don't do orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is impressive. That is a wide array of skills. So thank you for thank you. your dedication and service. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks for being here. Okay. Um, we're ready for an approval of the agenda. Okay, so we have a motion by, <coughs> excuse me, Karen Cronin, and a second by Wade Hyde to approve the agenda. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, our first item on the agenda is our school fees discussion. And so I'm going to turn the time over to Keith Meekham to kind of explain that for us. And we'll do public comment after. And then we do public comment after. Okay. okay. So, a little background. For years and years and years and years and years, we had a very um, generic school fee uh, schedule, and a lot of the fees that were being assessed weren't really necessarily showing up on this fee schedule. Um, as the state has put a, a bigger um, microscope, on school fees in general. We've been able to uh, become more transparent of what fees are, how much they are, what they're going for, and uh, we really feel good about uh, the things that we've done. Just right now, currently, uh, this a year ago, the school board um, approved school fees, and uh, it had it broken down. It's on our website, and it's also, you know, schools at the school websites as well, but it gives you a flavor of um, what is it going to look like if you're going to go to school at uh, Bearber High School, Box Other High School, Sunrise, all the different fees you know, associated with that. In addition, uh, we have the intermediate, uh, intermediate and middle schools. And then we also have, which seems to be the, you know, the largest bulk of this, which is extracurricular activities, clubs, not co-curricular, all of these types of things. So anyway, um, we're coming a long ways. I will state that as we get into this new year of 22-23, I might add just since two years ago, this little Bearer High School 114 in the lower left, that number used to be 163. So it took us two years, but you know there were certain rules and regulations by the state and that has dropped this number. So. This, this current year, um, sorry, I've got this thing right here because I'm sharing my screen. Um, this current year, that number's at 144. But beginning next year, we're taking away a fee that is no longer possible, which was a digital content fee. Oops, that's not what I want. Um, and so what we've tr traditionally done is when we've used that fee to buy Chromebooks. Well now, through other men or other avenues, we now are going to buy our Chromebooks another way. We've taken this off of every parent. That'll be uh, decreased by $30. So from an academic standpoint, we're proposing that, again, we drop it down further from 163 to 114, or 144, and then this year to 114 uh, at the high school level. Uh, the only thing I did find out, and I put this in green just to remind me, but if a kid goes to Bridgerland and they're a high school kid and they're on a fee waiver, their fees for Bridgerland are waived. They're treated just like it was a high school. And there was a little confusion on whether that was the case, but that, that does apply. Now, Keith, yes. um, my understanding at Bridgerland is they're not charging any kid any fees regardless. Now, if it's a project 
class where they have to buy specific things. Then they have to buy that, they do the equipment things. or whatever. But the, the overall fees, Bridgeland has waived all overall fees for all. When I talked to them uh, about uh, 10 days ago, they didn't inform me of that. Oh. So if that is the case, that's great. They just said that if a kid is on a fee waiver, all their fees are gone. We, it's been the August board oh, meeting. That's they good. They said there's no fees. So they didn't mention that to me, but uh, if that's the case, that's outstanding. Um, I will also state, um, if you want to look at the middle level, again, this used to be $30 more, you know, from 83, do the math, that's good. And then the, into the intermediate schools, these are dropping down to 67 and 38. So our fees are taking a tumble <coughs> for academics, which helps parents on the back end. And uh, we're excited about that particular thing. One thing, I, this won't affect that maybe, but I don't know, the co pres or, what's his name? Governor <laughs> Governor Cox proposed budget for education. One of his proposals is to eliminate academic fees or curricular fees for all schools. He's put aside like fifty-five million or something for that, and that 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 would be part of his. Now, whether it passes legislature or not, that that was part of his proposed budget that he did yesterday. So if that's and the if case, that would be the case, uh, the school board uh, approves this in January, and then we get that law to pass, I'm sure we could do a revisement, and we, we could, could uh, decrease <laughs> this money from parents so that they wouldn't uh, have to pay that fee. Yeah. Um, now, let me go to what I want everybody to have an open mind about what I'm about ready to say. <laughs> I want everybody to be open-minded because I don't want anybody falling out of their chairs. Make sure you've got strapped up, you're sitting good. Okay, what, really? I said that, yeah. So looking back at the 21-22, our current year, okay? I just want you to notice some numbers. Every kid that participates in an extracurricular activity pays a $10 drug testing. Mm -hmm. There is a participation sport. That number has not been changed since 2008. And in 2008 there was when the economy went down and gas prices went to 450 to 5, then there was a $25 fee. So it was 45, but the money that came in or I didn't do the math right. It went up 25, so what is that? Yeah, it was 45. So, and before that, 1993, when I first came to the district, it was 45. Like, that fee has not changed, and obviously we know that nothing's gone up since 1993. But I wanted to point out that, uh, you know, that's, a, that's where we've been paying this, and then every sport would come in here and baseball would say, I think I need 200. Well, that 200 plus the 70 plus the 10, we're at 280. They go to St. George for three days, that's another 180. And so all of this creates this, I feel like, even though we're more articulate and transparent, it does show that we're somewhat nickel and diamond people. Well, we got 200 here, we got 180, we didn't tell me, and Jeepers, now we got 70 and this 10, and then we got off-season summer camps, and geez, they just keep charging us. Sorry, I'm a little excited about this. <laughs> I apologize. But here's what I wanted to show you. I'm like, what are people around us doing? Because Bear River participates in Region 11, which is Cash School District and Logan School District. Box Elder participates in Region 5, which is Weber School District and Davis School District. So we're trying to compete against these regions. How are our fees compared to what they? And I've just thought, I'm going to go do a little research. So, I will try to make this as big as you guys can see. Maybe that's even... That's good. Is that not bad? For you, maybe in the back, that's a little... Yucky, let me go a little further. We can't go to 200, that'll just be crazy. Yeah, that's not too bad though, actually. So, I just did a little comparison. Participation fee, cash, it's $70, but it's included in the cost of the sport, and I'll show you what that means. Logan, included in the cost of the sport. Weber, $85, but including the cost of the sport, 
Davis, 70 bucks, it's not included. Drug testing, 10, 22, included, didn't know what the cost was, couldn't find it, and five bucks. Transportation, part of our participation fee goes to transportation. It's 20 bucks. 30 bucks uh, at cash, 15 for Weber, $20 per season. Again, not part of Weber's. Um, gate fees, uniform fees, for sports that buy their own fee, or that buy their own uniform, they obviously don't pay a uniform fee. But if I'm gonna use a uniform for multiple years, after a while, those have to be replaced. And so cash actually has a uniform fee, so that for basketball and football in particular, after three, four years, you can buy the $250 uniform that replaces the uniform that's been used. Anyway, so I would just draw you to just a couple of things here. First column is box elder. Second column is cash. Third column is Logan. Fourth column is Weber. And fifth column is Davis. That's now keep in mind... to look better. What's that? That's why our kids want better uniforms. I'm just better. telling you a couple things about who we compete against. Weber, or excuse me, Davis is 700 across the board. And then they get to cheer, color guard, and drill, and they raise it. But they also have this extra 70, 20, and 5 that goes up and beyond the 700. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, um, if they have any kind of extended travel, that's not part of that number. They could go up to $1,000. I uh, just wanted to show you Weber, 860, 860, 810, 910, 880, 860, 860, 860, 835, 2020 for cheerleaders of Weber School District. And if they travel, it's another 1,000. Color Guard, Drill Team, 1810. Uh, Logan, 700, 800, cross country, they don't spend a lot of money. Football, golf, lacrosse, soccer etc. And by the way, I know the, um, you're going to want to maybe see this. I can, you know, anyway, just, all right. My point being is they are being more transparent with this is what we're doing. And it has travel in it. It has participation fee in it. It has drug testing fee in it. It has uh, camps that are offered by the district. Again, if you don't attend it, you wouldn't pay it, but it's there so that you can get a pretty good idea. So I think when we hear from our, I'm yelling. I'm yelling. <laughs> I did not mean to yell. I really do have a soft No, it's called passion. He's coaching. Anyway, he's coaching us. I have some issues with this because it's, when we say 250 for softball, there's at least another 200 bucks to go to St. George that's not listed. And there's participation of another 70, and then drug testing another 10. And pretty soon, we're pretty close to what they're doing. Pretty close. Now, I will also say, I've looked at spending plans of these other districts, and they are not spending that money in every sport right to the brim. What it does is it gives a little latitude so that if something came up, like we have requests right now from some coaches in spring sports at Box Elder that had to make a budget a year ago. And what's happened in the last year in terms of cost of things, they need to increase some fees or they're going to lose money on uniforms because they had to approve it January of 2020. They're not even going to use it until 21 of, or 22 of March. So anyway... I just wanted to just show you all this wonderful data so that you can get a really good feel. Our wrestling programs, I will tell you, we have two of the premier wrestling programs in the state of Utah. Both Bear River and Box Elder and then girls, rest, or girls wrestling at Bear River. 150, 900 to our cash, 600 to Logan, 850 to Weber, 700 to Davis. And these are our competitors. Now. None of our coaches want to gouge people. But what we would suggest, and I'm going to ask for your feedback, and I want the public to 
share their concerns and, and thoughts, and I'm totally okay to dig and share and explain. But here is my proposal for this next year. Mind you, academic fees drop, but I just think we ought to do something like this. Maybe you could look in column left. We would have baseball 800, basketball 800, etc. 800, 800, 800, 800, 800, 800, 800. Stay with me before we have a come apart. Okay? Everybody's the same instead of going, we're 250, we're 225, we're 231. We're f we put it all there. And guess what goes into those fees? The Utah High School Activity Association per sport activity maximum includes participation fee, transportation, drug testing, officials, uniforms, equipment, refurbishing, participation packs for teams, off-campus, on-campus clinics, and other associated travel costs. The only thing would be is if for some reason a team made the state tournament and, and they need to stay overnight. This generally applies to more Bear River because they oftentimes have to go down to St. George. Not as much for Box Elder, although there are a few that have to play it in Orem, and so they might. But anyway, let me show you what I'm suggesting. I'm still going to show that drug testing, I'm going to drop it down five bucks, but make it per sport instead of ten per year. So if you play, you're in the pool. If you don't play, you're not in the pool. Raising participation fees to a hundred bucks because and by the way, that'd be 30 more than we just have had for the last 29 years. And then we have noticed that per diem for the state went up, which is why, I'm, and also hotel costs have gone up, as we've done in some um, in-state hotel, things have gone up because of the pandemic. Now, what I would really like to show you, and, and before you just hold your questions, I'm gonna click on, now, this is a little raw, but this is what I anticipate. Every sport, every school will have a document on their webpage with a specific breakdown of what it will be per item, and it cannot go over these max. So if I, I'll just click on this, shall I? We'll go box elder for this example. I just made this. Looks really nice. All right. So, by July 15th, all of our fall activities will have to have their spending plan posted. It cannot go over the board's approval of 800. It, well, cheer would be a little more, but you can't go over it. A parent or a student can click on that link, which will be on their webpage, and, oh boy, let me zoom that out just a little bit. Okay? You'll see the school year, the high school. We'll have the coach advisor's name. If you want, we could even put an email address there. So you could just email that coach if you have a question. Here's the sport. This would be the approved fee. Um, and then here's what happens. A participation, $100. Drug testing, 5 And then every item that's going to go towards that 1300 max. That's travel, that's camps, that's everything that that's just listed line by line by line. As you add items, this number gets bigger. And so you get closer to it, but every school has it. Instead of me taking everybody's accurate information, I put it back on principals and coaches to say, give me your spending plan. Don't gouge people. We're not gouging people, but if we have a legit, this is what we're going to do. We're straight up. Everybody knows the cost. You know drug testing. You know uh, travel. If I'm not traveling, I'm not going to spend as much if I'm not traveling. But if I am, you're going to see it, and a parent knows. And by the way, these all are fee waiverable. It's not like we're trying to, if a, if a parent can't meet it, it's fee waiverable. And coaches work with kids, and we figure this out. Um, I didn't mean to get too excited about that. But what I want to show you is maybe another example. Um, my daughter plays girls basketball, so I just kind of, based on this year, I kind of played with the numbers a little bit. 
and I wanted to show you something. Okay? Uh, school year is next year. Coach, is, Coach Dooley, it's girls basketball. The maximum approved fees is 800. This is assuming we approved it. So I just did what I know. Participation, obviously, we raised it to 100. Drug testing, 5. They bought a practice uniform at 60. There were team sweats that cost 120. The game day lunches. So on game days, we don't buy any food for our kids, home or away. We just pay 50 bucks and all the food is prepared and we just let our kids enjoy. And if you've never went to 20 games for 50 bucks, you do the math. Okay, banquet is $15. You'd go to St. George for three nights, which could potentially be 225. Obviously, we're not looking for the, yeah, high end. the high end, but if it's there. Now, I know that he hosts the summer camp. Is it required? No, it's not required, but it's there. And if you want to participate in that summer camp, it's 100 bucks. You add all those together, what do you get? 675. It doesn't mean we're going to spend 800, but every coach, every activity advisor has to put it in there to say what they could do. Is that a little yucky? Yeah. I uh, ironically, this is my I've had 5 kids. They've all played a variety of things. Many of them multi-sport. This is on this is not unreasonable. I know what I've spent for the last since 2007. This is actually more transparent and more reasonable. So I know as a parent what's out there. Um, again, we have to make sure that advisors and coaches are not building up because if they're not spending on what they're saying it, then that's a, that's a problem. And we would have to audit and make sure that they're staying in their budget and that we're not just storing money away for some other cause. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Talk to me. So if it is a nice sport, say girls basketball, and they come up with, I don't remember, 650, then they would only charge 650. Correct. Right? They would never, they can't charge more than the max, but most likely they'll just charge what it is. And I can, can I, I I've got to do this. I have a couple questions though. Oh, okay. So can I then, use your mic? You're really quiet. Okay. So if uh, they didn't end up spending all of it, does it go back to the families? It wouldn't roll over into like just a fund, an athletic fund. They have to spend what they say they're going to spend. Yeah, they don't just automatically spend 800 Yeah, they don't charge. They don't no, I got that, that. But, like, if, if for some reason another virus hit, they can't go to St. George, they don't spend all the money, it goes back to the parents, it doesn't go into an athletic fund. I don't know the answer to that, but if we're not going to go someplace, they can't charge that fee. Well, no, the, the year that COVID hit, we had teams that were planning to go to St. George. Mm -hmm. They didn't go. So if it's not spent, does it go back to the families? It doesn't stay in an athletic fund. For trips, they don't collect it until. Yeah. For trips, they don't collect till they go. Okay. So that, but, I'm just wondering. But all that other okay. stuff, they know like I'm buying practice gear. But what if it's like there's a few sports that like if it's your first year you do it. I'll just do an example. When I was a basketball coach, when they were freshmen, we bought practice gear, but we used practice gear. For three years, so the next year that wasn't a cost, and so if you don't buy it, you don't use it. So That's you don't need. My point was getting at you don't pay like six fifty up front. You just pay it as you go, so then the parents know. But they know where it's coming it's from, coming. and they know what it's for. I will just show you something that's well, kind one, of. One thing, Karen, is part of the law. We cannot require other kids to pay to cover fee waivers, so we can't just have a pool of money that covers. It has to be tied to the specific students. So they would collect it as, it's okay, we're going here, but this way you know ahead of time what you're getting. The parents know ahead of time. Yeah. <clears throat> this all over. has to be done right. prior to tryouts. And it won't go over 800. That's the limit. No, no, no. But how is that different than what we currently have? It's cleaner. It's more, and it also gives us flex. What we currently had, we had a hover spot, and it would tell I know. the parents what it was. It does. The difference is, is this is cleaner and it's more legible, and it gives some wiggle room when we have the ebbs and flows of, 
equipment costs, instead of you having to come in and saying, you know what, we underestimated because a year and a half ago I had to put this budget in and now we've got to have you, because I have a couple of fees right now, I need you to adjust because we're nickel and diamond, we're getting so tight. I'll just give you an example, this is Mountain Crest High School this year. Their fee that was approved by Cash School District was 800 Okay, they have all their fees listed, all the things that they have, and it came to 419 So guess what they were charged? 419 Guess what they could have charged? 800 because that was the max that the school board said they could. Obviously, they didn't. They didn't travel. It was one of those things. So that's a really good question. We're not really returning fees, but I don't think we should we shouldn't be even assessing them if we're not going to do it for what we need. Yeah. Um, Can I just say something? Yes, like, go I ahead. Personally, as a, <clears throat> as a parent who has children, it's like, how much is the jersey, like my son plays golf, how much is the hat gonna cost you? How many, are they gonna get two shirts, are they gonna get one shirt? It'd be nice to just say, I kinda have that in my mind, I know it's not gonna go over this, and hopefully it's lower, but like, I wish they would, like the golf team went to state, but they didn't stay overnight. And so, and it was down in Spanish Fork. It was kind of a, a hassle. And so some parents stayed with their, you know, I wish yeah. that would be, if they had that, they say that we could, parents know, well, it, that is up to that. So if we could go down, we can spend the night and it makes it better for everybody. But I know that up front. So for me, from my perspective, it's easier to see because I can budget for that amount or, but hopefully it won't go up. But I don't like the, like, I don't like the little hovering over. And the, yeah, it, 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 I mean, it was a nice idea. It became, it's it was something, but I think the better way would be honestly to go here. We'll have this, but every school will have it. We just go to Bear River High School, for example, and this will be on there. They'll be, have a page for fees, and you'll just click on it, and you'll be able to know exactly what the fees are. You'll have them up front and they can't go over maximums. Now I see Melanie Day in the back and uh, it brings me to a question. See, notice uh, when you start looking how we're sort of nickel and diamond, I will just tell you that was, I had some 125, some 132s, you know, we're into like dollar amounts. And I will tell you that there's theaters that are uh, 800 bucks at Davis School District. They have other costs. They're all now. Will they spend them all? Most likely not. But the board's decided we're going to go a little broad, and we want spending plans, and we want accountability, and we're not gouging anybody. It's not a fundraiser saying we can go to 800. Geez, we get 20 kids to pay 800 bucks, and we only spend 400. We're making some good dough. That's not the plan of how this works, and we'd monitor that for sure. So I guess. You know, I'd be curious to see what people say. It looks a little yucky. I'm not going to deny that it looks a little yucky. But what I want to say is, all you have to do is look at everybody we compete against, and you can see that we are not out of the ball park. So Keith, on the, I can see that the, the athletics are that. Are you proposing, what about the performing? Well, I'll tell you benefit? what I did. I kind of raised these up about 50 bucks, but I'm not opposed to giving them a little cushion. Melanie, without really divulging, could you maybe give me a little how you felt about that? I don't know if I can do that. I just did. Sorry. Well, we've never included like travel in any of our costs. So like, if we get to go to State Theater, it's a two-day night in a hotel. That's right. It's so going to cost you 150 bucks. Like, it's 150 dollars. So. Now that that's 250 instead of 100, that's like included in. And, I, and it's always been on like, you give the parent the disclosure and it says, if we go to state theater, it's going to cost about this much money. Yeah. But I mean, how parents get, I mean, I'm a parent, I get a ton of stuff, and you don't always read everything. Yeah, it's true. But you also know it's always going to cost more than you think it's going to. Well, and I just want to add, again, it's, this is December of 21, and we're making decisions for the mm -hmm. baseball and softball team for March of 23. I mean, we're making decisions. And so by being a little broader, it does give us a little bit of, and again, we'll talk to coaches, we'll make sure we are not gouging people, but we are trying to be more like, this is the cost, all of it right here, and here's your spending plan. And then we make sure that people know what it is. The what we've had, there's nothing wrong with uh, this. 
you know, so here's, here's what you do. You got 200 for baseball and 10 here and 70 more here. And you click on this thing and it says, oh, they tend to travel. Well, how many days are we going to be in St. George? We're going to spend three days. Okay, so that's 180 bucks. And then I've got the 200 here and the 70 and the 10. And oh, by the way, I forgot to put the banquet down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because yeah. not everybody has a banquet but listed, but guess what everybody has? A banquet. Why? Because they, they're not thinking of all those things when they're doing this. So I've talked way too much, and I'm missing my daughter's basketball game. But what I wanted to say was I would be glad to share this document to whomever. I don't know if I, I probably will send it out in an edu link so all parents and students can know that this could be a proposal, a draft, and then we'll have feedback in January and it'll be a party. Okay, so let me ask the board right now, are, is this something that you feel comfortable in moving in this direction, or are there hesitancies about? Could, could you add, um, could they include what the required, like if the uh, family wants to participate but don't want to send them to here, have them asterisk the ones that are required to participate, Yeah. the others are optional? Yeah, or we only put down what is required. We only list required. Mm -hmm. Anything that's not required. Well, when I was that, a bad, I'll, oh, sorry, Kim. I was just going to say with that, like going to St. George is not required, but part of the whole point, I thought, is you wanted to put those feet in there. No, I think it is required. It's a game. It's We're going. It's a, it would be required. I don't think you can opt out. What opt out is, is what we're going to do this summer. Well, and you said yourself, you know, jerseys. I might not need to buy a new jersey because they had one last Correct. Time. So I and think so, there is required and non-required. Yeah. I've had kids that couldn't go to St. George. So I think one of the things, well, and, and that's true. I'm just saying, if it's a, a sport, I want our kids to go. Every one of them. Well, they and, do, but there's always family activities and things. Oh, yeah. I don't think we're going to change. And I guess if they didn't go, that's also, fine. No, I, I understand what you're pay, saying. Yeah, yeah they don't, if so they don't go. I but, think that that's the required, non-required asterisk, I think, is a good idea. Okay. Well, I think that's, that's I mean, I, I'm not, I struggle with the required, non-required, because, yeah, there's specific things you need to do, but if you're on the team, you're going to want to do, but as a parent, if you can look through and say, okay, maybe we could skip this, maybe, but so, as long as it's pick on Melanie Day, um, <laughs> I've had, I've had kids, you know, say, oh, got to buy a wig, got to have shoes, got to have da 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 so while we're in this event, I'm thinking, yeah, we started here and we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, my girls' softball bags, I think those were 150 bucks just to start, but we used them. You so probably bought them once. Yeah, bought them once. We could put them in them, but when they bought them at the time. Now so I think, uh, Brian, so, just so you know, uh, AJ and I, I mean, we've talked to the, both athletic directors. I've talked to all uh, secondary uh, principals. <clears throat> And I think their idea is to be more transparent. And they actually brought up the idea of these are the required if you, I mean, required meaning we're sponsoring it, we're going to do it. Now, if there was a wedding and you can't, obviously we'd work with that, but we're going. And then these are the, to me it was, I'll just give you one example, sorry. When I was a basketball coach, I had a box elder camp for anybody that was going to play during the summer. And it was required. It costs $25, but you have to come if you want to play during the summer. If you don't want to play during the summer, you don't have to come. Now, obviously, there were, you know, I wanted them there. That would be fee waiverable, and it was sort of an expectation. But if someone couldn't make it because of whatever, obviously life wasn't over. But I really wanted them to come so we could teach them. But the, I didn't, they didn't have to go to Utah State. They didn't have to go to uh, Dixie. They didn't have to go to BYU. They didn't have to go up to Idaho. Those are just options, and I think what you're saying is a good point, and I think we could do that. Well, I just like as a parent, contact. yes, we didn't do 800, woo! <laughs> we, if we cut some things out. Um, because it is, and when you have kids, you anticipate they cost money. They fall out of trees, they break arms. You do things for your kids. It's, yeah, it's unreasonable, it goes a long ways. I guess I'm still not convinced that we need to put that much more on the fees. So I'm, I'm willing to look at it, but I'm not willing at this point to say, yeah, we Well, need this to is just your cut at it. You need to go back so. to all of the organizations and have them put the plan together, and then we approve that, right? Well, no. 
here's well this is what I anticipate mm -hmm. this is your you're approving maximums the school board's responsibility is not to approve each spending plan mm -hmm. the school board's responsibility is to approve maximums and then what happens is there's a note here <coughs> Each coach, advisor, supervisor of each activity listed above per policy 5226, which you can actually click, will provide annually to parents and students before tryouts an activity disclosure statement that will give details, including expected fees of the respective activity, club, or sport. These lists are available on each school's website under the wherever we're going to put it. So really, the job of the board is to approve MATS. And then the job of each coach and advisor and principal is to make sure that the spending plan that's going to be available on websites do not go over max and we're not gouging people and we're being very transparent to what uh, folks are supposed to do. So I will say I, one last I have thing. One other thing. So with the drug test, we got this all just in, in athletics. I thought the goal was to drug test students. No, there are more people than just, so there that, are more that folks. that drug test will go across to all the other, every group that represents box elder. Correct. They're all part of the $5. So that goes, so they will get that in part of their fees. Correct. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just, uh, just, I don't know if we explained this up front, but this school fees uh, approval requires two public hearings. Mm -hmm. This is considered one of them, and so the board is not not approving anything tonight. And the Keith's, you know, Keith's worked. I would like to think you can see how hard he's worked. I, I've had a very good understanding of how hard he's worked and how many people he's talked to, and the, the due diligence of working with Davis, Weber, Logan, um, and yeah. Cash to find out, you know, what what we're up against, and, and so he's put in a lot of time. And so with him putting it on the web pages and sending it out in our email, uh, yeah. I just lost what we call it. Edulating. Edulating, thank you. Then next month, you know, I would assume that there could be more um, discussion, more questions, more thoughts, more ideas, and you know, that's, that's when we'll have it as an um, action item next month. Yeah, and so I think that um, I just want to make sure that what we're sending out to the public to be commented on is actually what the direction we're moving in rather than like... Yeah comment on this and then like, oh, just kidding, that's nothing what we're going to do. So yeah. I think that this is a good direction. I, I, I like this transparency, the way this is working. And like you said, I don't think that coaches, they want to get do what's best for their, their teams and their clubs, but they don't want to just spend a bunch of money. But they don't, but it's easier to see. So I guess that's why I think, cause I think this is a well, and we actually do have public comment at this point for anybody who's here that would like to provide public comment about that now. That's one of our um, requirements. requirements to do. So, Julie, can I yes, just go ahead, Wade. You know, as a, a parent, but my kids are older now, but I, I think it's a good idea to, to let them know right up front how much it's going to be. Uh, because I remember when I had kids in school, you're saying, oh, 120 here, 50 there, we kept adding up. How much are they going to have? You know? Just kept going on and on. So I think there's a limit there, and everybody knows that. I, I just think that's, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Good. And I'm just going to reiterate, I thought that's what we were doing two years ago when we put the fees out there. Mm -hmm. So I think this might clean it up. But some of my um, concern is um, I have experience with tennis, and they're used to seeing like 145, so to see a max fee of 800, I think is going to be a little sticker shop. So, um, I, I yeah, want to make sure that we... But we I might just add, I mean, to address, because it, it, you have a legit concern. But when you hear 140, um, and the team went to St. George for three nights, mm -hmm. it's not 140. It's 140 to buy your uniforms and different things. You have $70 in participation fee that's not part of that one, <coughs> and there's not travel. We have it listed, but you're kind of guessing, geez, are we going to travel, are we not? By having the spending plan, you know, down here in these links, you're, and I, in fact, I would think that school, our coaches should do it more earlier than later, but you should be able to know before I'm going into fall sports what I'm going to pay. Are we traveling this year or not? I was a head coach for a while. I traveled two years 
in 18 years. So those two years, we had a lot more money. The other years, it was a lot, lot less. So anyway, um, you're right though. I just think as I looked at Mountain Crest and Cash and other districts and their spending plans instead of the hover over and well, no, I like yeah, so I think it's a I think it's a better format if we do it. I know it's a problem if we say 800. The the natural person's going to say, "Geez, we're going to go to 800." Geez, I have three sports and five kids, and wow! <laughs> but that is not the case. It's not going to be un, you know, yeah. supervised. Well, is there a way when we ask? Because if we're going to send this out to clarify, I mean, I guess I don't know how else to do it. Because I don't think many people hover over those things anyhow like to see the little details, maybe they do, but um, because if we're going to have public comment, and we do want to hear feedback, but I don't want to just hear, I want them to know up front what we're talking about rather than, you're going to charge me $800 for everything and then we have to re-explain this. No, I think that'd have I to be, if I'm going to send it out, I'm going to have to have an explanation. Yeah. Because I'm not yeah. sure we're quite ready to build every little one, although we could put a, a snapshot, but again, the role of the fees is to approve the maps yeah. and the <laughs> overall maps. By the way, Last year, this was 2,500. I thought if we go to 800, we probably ought to raise it a thousand. <laughs> Not that, and by the way, that was in comparison to everybody around us. That was a more natural number. Well, and I think that if we explain that instead of you don't have to add the participation, <coughs> the activity, the potential travel. This is an all-inclusive. You know, you hear all-inclusive packages. Yep. People like, you know, you know what you're going to spend. Yep. It's just a little bit more palatable if you understand it that way. Yeah, versus I agree. The guessing game. So, thank you for putting that together. Are there any public comment? Those who are here that have any comments or concerns or things they'd like to share about the school fees in particular? Okay. I just have one. Good. Keith, I was wondering, could you contact a couple school districts and just ask, you know, how it works for them and if it's been... I have. Oh, you have? I've been on a phone call with Weber and Davis and Cash. And has it worked well for them? Because it's, number one, it gives a, it's a big enough umbrella, there's some flexibility, but nobody's getting close <coughs> to spending their max that I could see on their websites. Okay. Well, and it would give the coaches a chance to do real numbers at a closer time period. Yeah. Instead of having to be quite so critical so far out, it gives them a chance to make adjustments. Right? Yeah. So how late can they make adjustments? Before, it has to be done before the uh, tryout date. So if it's a tryout date, it has to be done. I'm thinking it should be two weeks before the tryouts, but we could make that whatever you'd like. Is that the July 15th, October yeah. 15th? Yeah, this is two weeks before the trimester. And then for like school right. clubs and theater, I know that you have the school play, so that would have to be done. Spring. Melanie. I'm just asking, like, if coaches get to do it every trimester, that's more like, like things like choir and band and all of us that go all three trimesters. You should have more. So you're planning, like, no, just, I'm not talking about, I think more, but, like, if I'm planning something and I ask in 10 periods in August, this is how much it's going to cost for, uh, like, state theater in in late April, mm -hmm. it's hard to know those numbers in advance. Yeah. So you probably need. So for the sports, it's pretty simple, right? Because but I think you bring up. You I've, kind of know. Yeah, you kind like, of know. This is how much it's going to cost in the next 90 days. But for things like cheer and rockets and like those things that last an entire year, that's really hard to like predict what things are going to. Well, in our current economic climate. Correct. <laughs> yeah. So maybe for those, we may have to look at, and I don't know what the right, I'll have to ask on what they do for that. Well, I can I'm ask that question. I'm wondering if like, because if we up those, but like that's one of the benefits of having a larger max is that we, we don't have to worry, we're gonna stay under the max, but maybe the details come out just prior to whatever the, the, thing, is. the thing is. So if we can work it out that way, but that way it's, you know, you're not trying to yeah, add up all the dimes. Well, maybe what, what you just brought up is we kind of have what we'd anticipate for the first yeah. trimester expenses and then this is what we have kind of going second try for these sports or these activities <coughs> they're all year round mm -hmm. this is kind of what we have and maybe we maybe those same deadlines hit uh, this is kind of what we're talking about we just keep it on the same document yeah. or you could even break it down into first try expenses second try I like it yeah. Yeah. do you That's need to talk about the point. increase on your spring sports that's part of the reason this came up. 
Right. So, yeah. I want to ask this question. I had Jeff Rollins at Box Elder High School. Has looked at <clears throat> the kids buy the uniforms, but what he put in last year, December, and what he's buying them now, he needs twenty dollars more now. Upon further review, I found out that his overall fee was not over the max. In fact, it was under the max. So by adding the 20, he's still under the max. So I think as long as they don't go over the max, then we are okay as long as the spending plan per policy 5226 is given to all parents and students prior to that. But so I he, think we're okay. I but didn't if think he wasn't, then if he wasn't, then we would have to ask the board to approve that in January um, for an extension. Yeah. Well, that's good that he's aware of that. Thank you for all your hard work. That is a lot of work, and it's a, it's quite a, it's a what do you call it? A touch point for lots of people. And it's a, you know. I wish I could show you what it looked like four years ago. <laughs> We are making progress, I think. We are getting better. We are getting better. Yeah. Well, thank you. Well, we're moving on to our um, our regular public comment, and I don't have anybody signed up, but is there anybody that had any other public comment that was not related to school fees that wanted to sign up but did not get signed up? Okay, great. Let's move on to our action items. So the first thing we have is our positive behavior plans, and... Jackie, do you want to explain those? We, I know each of the board members have an assignment to review about six schools, and primary and secondary, and so. Yeah, this comes from House Bill 58. And um, we, all the schools are in the, in the state of Utah have been asked to create their own positive behavior support plan. House Bill 58 is about tobacco, cessation, drugs, uh, getting the kids away from that. And the way that the state wants us to go about doing that is by having positive behavior supports in the school. Mindfulness, social and emotional learning, um, restorative justice and practices instead of punitive and things like that. So each school uh, came up with plans, what they're doing now, what they want to put in play, and. Um, that's kind of what you have had in front of you, is those, are those plans. So I've reviewed those, made sure that they fit into the statute um, as it's written, and so hopefully you will approve those. Are there any questions that you have about that? Yes, Nancy. So the ones that I've read, uh, most, a lot of them mentioned the Botvin. Yes. Like, so if you could explain Botvin and Second Step. I know the oldest bullying one, or old whatever, but I don't know the Botvin sure. or Second Step. Um, Botvin is taught in the secondary schools um, in some of the different, in, and, and we also are, this year is fourth and fifth grade as well. But the Botvin in fourth and fifth has kind of taken over the D.A.R.E. Mm -hmm. program. Do you remember that D.A.R.E. Mm -hmm. program? It's, it's now the Botvin program. Um, and in the secondary schools, they address some of those same issues, how to say no, how to s stay away from um, drugs and alcohol and making good choices and things like that. So that's what Botvin is in a little nutshell. Second Steps is what we are using right now in our K-5 through five, uh, <coughs> elementary school and it is a social emotional curriculum that teaches um, just healthy attitudes and uh, approaches to <coughs> the world around them. How to have those academic and those social behaviors that are necessary to access education. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <coughs> okay, do we have a motion? I make a motion that the board approve the submitted PBS plans. I'll second. So we have a motion by Wade Hyde and a second by Brian Smith to approve the positive behavior plans. Uh, any other comments or concerns? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, passes. Uh, the next thing we have is our can you believe it? Our calendar for the 22-23 year. <laughs> ah. So we have a linked there. Do you have any questions on that, board members? You looked that over. I know that 
um, Keith has spent some time in and put in some of those extra professional days more strategically placed than like we added a couple um, last, was it just last month or the month before? And so this time next year we've kind of got them already <coughs> in and they're on Fridays. I, I saw those and uh, I appreciate those. We had also talked about maybe doing um, some half days sprinkled through. Is that is that something that um, I think we were talking half day Fridays last month. Is that something that we don't know if we're going to get next year as far as the number of uh, PD days or I it just wasn't addressed in the calendar, so that's why I was wondering. Um. I think as we talked about half days, what ends up happening on half days is um, you don't do kindergarten and you don't do preschool. And I think we, that, that occurred to us. And so it seemed like if we did those half days, we'd lose a lot of kindergarten days and preschool. And that was kind of our thinking why we did that. We, when we talked about it earlier, we didn't take that into account. I, is that the ration, wasn't that the rationale we used? And I thought the half days were more for this year because of teachers needing more time. We were going to see if we needed that this year. We were going to go back and collect more data and see if that was really a need or if the data. Our feeling good. from administrators is that what we had was let's just start with those um, and then moving forward just having these one days eat, one each each try, each try and let's see where that we we'll see where that goes. Those will be work days. Exactly. So we'll, as you start looking at uh, what is that? September 30th and February 3rd and March 17th. Those three days would be no school for students. Can I have an applause over there? Okay. And uh, but it would be a work day for. It's all right. Just gonna try to keep you going here. But it would be a work day for all employees. Training opportunities. And we have, we have had comments from our principals that half days <coughs> would almost be better to have no days because they don't feel like there's a lot of work that gets done on those half days. So that's kind of the feedback that we ended up getting. Okay, I just wanted to know where it was because at the last meeting we were going that direction. That was, yeah, I think that was more for talking about possibly this year. This year. Right. And I think... Uh, the feeling was is maybe not go down that road right now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, any other questions on the calendar? <clears throat> Looks good. We got our spring break. We've got mm -hmm. spring break. It's almost spring. identical yeah, from last year except for the three new days. Yeah, I think that'll be good. Okay, we have. I move that we approve the 2022-23 uh, Box Elder School District calendars presented. I'll second that. So we have a motion by Brian and a second by Nancy to approve the 22 to 23 uh, district calendar as presented. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, fantastic. We have a calendar. All right, Superintendent, um, we're looking at our board meeting schedule and possibly changing our next couple of meetings, the dates we meet. Uh, board member Summers, um, son is a senior this year at Bear River High School and he plays on the basketball team and that's, um, I believe that's where she is tonight. And they happen, they just so happen to play January 12th and February 8th, I believe I wrote down. February 9th. Nine. That's our next two board meetings. And she wanted to know if the board would be willing to move those Tuesday or Thursday. She said if it doesn't work out, she's fine with it, but she asked me if I thought it would be okay to ask him. I said, I think it's okay to ask, but if it becomes you know, a problem, she said, it's fine. So is there anybody who uh, has? Well, yeah. So do Thursdays, I thought, do, do Thursdays work better for you, Connie? Um, or Thursdays, would, Tuesdays would be harder for me. Tuesdays would be harder. For I you. can't do Thursdays. And you can't do Thursdays. And I can't do Tuesdays. And you can't do Tuesdays. So are the games every every Wednesday? Wednesday, oh, yeah. They, they play a lot of Wednesdays. So, so we couldn't do the next Wednesday. That would work. <clears throat> well, it's more than likely. Keith, they are mostly boys. are mostly Wednesday, Friday, aren't they? Correct. Mm -hmm. That's, so I would, I would assume that it's okay. possible. I didn't look really hard at the schedule. But she would miss two board meetings, am I right? Yes, either yeah. that or, or miss the game. So I'm not sure what, what her... Because she said... If it doesn't work out, it's not a problem at all. 
Well, it sounds like we have a conflict because both ways. Both ways. Yeah. Karen can't do Tuesday or Thursdays. Some people can't do Tuesdays. So, so maybe at this point we should just leave it as is and okay. hopefully, because that. You can I, just I feel bad. <laughs> well, the least she could do is just send us the score. Yeah. yeah <laughs> That's what I said. Well, let's. You could. Uh, you, you know that it? that's always been a hard thing. I know yeah. that I've missed several concerts and things, and I think Julie missed a, a couple concerts with her yeah. kids. So it, it is hard, and we feel, but. Okay. And I and I and I was talking to Julie. I philosophically believe when you run for an office, you commit to be there. I told Julie I missed the awards assembly where my daughter was named outstanding girl of the year for Box Elder High. And that she'd gotten a scholarship because I was working. I did cut out before we got to the the stuff we did all the policy stuff. But I think when you commit, when you run as an official, you commit to do your job for the people. And as a parent, that's really hard. And I have sat with my phone and had the spouse send me scores. But we, you make commitments. When as an elected official, you make commitments and you promise your people <coughs> you will represent them. And it's hard. But that's why we're here. So that's my philosophical bit. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we should just leave them as is for now and we. I think so. Hopefully we can. You want to just move it? Since it's an action item, you want to just move to table it? Yeah, we'll just move to table Could it. Somebody... Could somebody move to table it? I guess I can't move to table it. Um, <laughs> do we want a table or do we just want to. Just vote? leave that is? Or just uh, sit, vote yeah, that we leave it as is? Yeah, and I would say that we. Uh, I make a motion that we re regrettably vote to leave it as is. I'll second and that motion. it's really hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have a motion by Karen and a second by Connie to leave it as it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right, next we have our approval of, hey, thank you for being here. <laughs> and thank you for the clap. Amen. <laughs> Keep working awesome. on those merit you badges. Doing that. <laughs> and keep Malone out of trouble. <laughs> okay, we're going to move on to the approval of the expansion of the Rocket 2 and Still 2 solar projects. So we've got we've got some representatives here that are ready to explain some of this. And I know lots of the board members have already been involved in some of these discussions, but Make it seem cool. Oh, there's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they should say this, right? Yes, it's coming on. We're out. <laughs> <laughs> More than school fees. Like, what wants to do that? So, <laughs> I just have some updated thank you uh, numbers in here, schedules. Most of this we've gone over previously, but I figured I'd give you guys something to look at while I talk about this stuff. Did I miss anybody? I have two extras. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, good. Can I get one? These are his person. So we're here from DE Shaw Renewable Investments. Um, I don't think we have too much to cover tonight. The presentation that I gave you guys goes over the original project areas um, as well as the expansion areas. I think the, uh, the bulk of what we're looking at tonight is the schedule and um, the updated tax numbers that are at the end of the presentation there. Um, but what we're looking to do tonight is to improve the, uh, the uh, agreements that are already in place for rocket and steel solar to include the second phase of each of those projects um, so that it covers the full tax amount that you guys can be seeing uh, from both, both projects. Um, so, so if you get yeah, on this page here, this is uh, our rocket to solar farm, which is the second phase. Um, this will also be adjacent to the, the original Rocket One project and is scheduled to start construction at the end of this year or early 2023 and come online in 2023. Um, and then the, the Steel Two project is on the same schedule in terms of construction and, and operation. 
Um, the schedule for the actual abatement or uh, tax increment um, financing agreements is um, to approve the amendment tonight for the plan, and that is the, the actual um, project area, so the parcels that are included, and uh, the budget, um, so that's that, uh, the increased tax amount that you guys would be seeing. Um, so approve those tonight. Sorry, is that right? Is, are we approving the plan and budget tonight? No, no just the amount area. Uh, just the amount area? Yeah, yeah. just the amount area. Yeah. So maybe if, if we just take a quick step back. Um, so Megan and I are from a company called DE Shaw Renewable Investments. I think most of you all are aware of the Rocket Solar Project and the Steel Solar Project. Rocket Project is close to Corinne, Steel Project is close to Plymouth. Um, a company called Enyo Renewable Energy was initially developing those, and they sold them to our company, Desri, about two years ago. And during that time that we acquired the projects, we also finished, essentially finished development to the point where we could start construction on both projects. So the initial phases of Rocket close to the ATK facility off of um, Highway 83, and then the steel facility, which is just off of Highway 15. Um, those have both started construction, and, and what we're here to propose is we had additional land, we had additional interconnect capacity, and we have a great relationship with the county. So we're here wanting to do more. And I think the benefit of what we're proposing is we had initial increments agreed to for the first 80 megawatts of both facilities, if we can add in the additional acreage into those first increment packages, we can then keep the deal the same, keep all the terms the same, keep the kind of level of bureaucracy for the district low, but then the benefit to the district is that those additional increment dollars are coming to you all at the same rate. So what we're proposing is let's keep everything the same, but add a little bit more increment that then comes back to the district in the form of additional revenues from the larger expanded projects. Um, so as Megan said, building the first ones right now, the additional benefit of adding the expansions is longer time for construction jobs to stay in the county, keeping more revenues within the county, obviously again, more increment coming back to you all. Um, so we see this as the most kind of straightforward win-win for both kind of the um, extended investment in the county as well as the extended benefit. Okay. okay, are there any questions from the board? This is kind of a, a unique project that we've discussed when we're pretty particular about some of these part, what do you call it? Increment, Increment financing, thank you, things. But this has been, we've already approved this and it's kind of unique and so I know in our discussions it kind of seems it's a win-win. Um, but are there any other I, questions? I was just going to note that this is um, kind of, an improvement from some of the other increment finance projects we've done because we get more of the increment up front and throughout the duration. And so um, I like the direction that that's going. And also, um, in talking uh, more one-on-one, -on -one, I found out that they have already have specific interested buyers, like what you say, um, some of the hospitals and University of Utah. Yeah, so for the rocket project, the initial phase, that's contracted to power uh, Facebook's data center operations in the state. For the steel project, that is contracted with a group of northern Utah municipalities, um, and then separately also with a group of um, universities and private customers that do operate in the northern part of the state. Desri uh, right now is, I think, the largest constructor and owner of projects in Utah. So we have other projects that are contracted with University of Utah, Facebook, Intermountain Healthcare, um, and, and others as well. So you know, I think the, the great thing about where clean energy has gone in the last few years since people started thinking about these projects is initially we were looking at a policy mandated market, right? There were projects being built to send power to California because California needed to purchase those renewable energy credits. Now customers want the power because it's cheap, which is great. So what we've seen is cost curves coming down to the point where you have University of Utah that understands its own power use very well and says, oh geez, 
use a lot of power during the day. It would make sense for us to have stably priced power, not exposed to different kinds of fuel volatility or um, you know other other kinds of potential volatility. Let's just contract power when the sun's shining, because we know the sun's going to shine at least a little bit every day. So. Um, economics have definitely played a big role in the way that these projects are now attractive to customers and are also bringing new investment in, right? Facebook's got this data center in Eagle Mountain, it's continuing to want to expand it. That requires new power, new additional projects. And part of that, like she said, is that the power stays local. And so the, the school district's getting added benefits as far as increased increment I mean, revenue and so with that, I make a motion that we approve the um, recommendation for the Rocket and Steel CRA expansion. I'll second that motion. Okay, so we have a motion by Karen Cronin and a second by Carney Archibald to approve the Rocket and Steel CRA expansion. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your work on this, and we look forward to continue this partnership with these good things. Thank you. Okay. Um, our next action item is the Lynn School. Rod, do you want to explain that? Maybe I'll have Corey. Oh, yeah, Corey's here. Corey's here. Let's have him. He can answer your questions better than I could also. Yeah, so we have a, we have a property in Lynn, Utah, and... Melanie just said, where's the, where's the school in Lynn? I said, it's in Lynn, Utah. So it is approximately 30 minutes north of Grouse Creek. Hopefully nobody asks where Grouse Creek is, because that's about an hour and a half west of Park Valley. So if you need, anyway. Um, so we have... The great yeah. part of the county. It's a Park Valley is about an hour from Snowman. Um, so, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Maybe it's the changing barometric pressure. So, um, we we have a school. We have a school in Lynn, in Lynn, which is a very rural, hard to find anywhere more rural. The school. I'm not sure when we stopped using it as a school. I would say probably early '80s. But since that time, it's been used as kind of a way station for different state agencies like Highway Patrol and Division of Natural Resources. I think BLM is used at some point. And they have um, paid a yearly lease to use that property. They uh, did not renew their lease. They have another building that they have built and that they're using. So they no longer need that land property. For us, it's of no use as a school. Um, any students in that area are currently bused north um, to, where do they go, Rob? Draft River? They, yeah, uh, they go into Cashew County. Some, okay. I'd say they go to either Raft River or Oakley. It's usually yeah, Oakley or Raft River, yeah. Okay. So that building it's kind of like a one-room schoolhouse. As you enter, there's a kitchen, there is a shower and a toilet sink, and then the main um, room there, and then a couple of little storage rooms off to the side. The roof was failing, and so we felt that it was prudent to put a new metal roof on because we didn't want this process to take long enough that suddenly the building has no value and we have to tear it down and we spend more by tearing it down. The new roof for supplies was about $4,200 and it took two of our maintenance crew five days to put that on. So we felt like it was, it was reasonable to take care of that. It has since also been winterized. It is on a well, culinary well, and that well is shared with our neighbor. Um, and the power for that well comes off of our property, off of our, our building there. Uh, let's see, what, what else? 
Isn't Rob working with trying to figure out the logistics and the legalities of that? Yeah, so there, there's nothing that we have found in writing as far as ownership or shared situation of that well. So maybe Rob can speak more to that. Yeah, the well, I did look back in, in uh, the property information. The well is legal. We do have a permit. It is, it was, we got a permit to drill a well out there. But I can't find any legal documentation uh, on the sharing arrangement. The neighbor is actually bought a building that used to be an LDS church that's next door. So at some point, I think the school district and church probably, the school district probably agreed to allow the church to share that well, but there's no written agreement in it. And so we, he's been using, sharing the well for years. So we'll probably all get in touch with an attorney to write up an agreement before we sell it. Do we have rights to the water? Yes. Legal rights to the we water? Have, we have a well permit that shows, uh, I think it's 0 .015 second foot of rights to the well water. And the well is on our property. And it's, it's a two acre property. Um, Perfectly And actually it's kind of interesting because I got back in there the school used to be called the Junction School, actually, even though it sits in Lynn. And uh, they were going to sell it back, uh, I think it actually stopped being used, actually, back in the 60s. And they were going to sell it, but DW, DWR wanted to use it and started leasing it. And so, and they have leased it up through the end of November of this month, so with the lease expired that's we can't think of any other use for it and uh, it will just deteriorate unless somebody goes in and buys it and goes out and takes care of it does something with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've seen the inside of the building and it's not okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, any other questions or comments? I just hope that uh, we get enough out of it to cover our costs. <laughs> oh, we, I, as I understand, there are already some interested parties. Yes, we were going to ask that you, as part of the motion, that you understand our plan would be to go ahead and advertise, take bids, and sell to the highest bidder. And we probably won't plan on bringing it back to the board unless you would, unless you specify that we do or there's complications similar to the last sale. Yeah. So we would move that that we declare it surplus and that mm -hmm. we propose it to the highest bidder and you take care of it. Yeah, you authorize administration to take care of the legal matter with the well and and to go ahead and sell, take bids on it and sell it. Do we, do we have any idea of the value or no. <laughs> it's going to go at least $4,200 because of the new roof. We're going to ask. A, we're, that's where we're starting at the roof cost. The market will prevail. But we do have uh, some interest. Tiffany said her, was it her father-in-law was interested? Her father, her father-in-law was interested in it. We've got three or four people that have expressed interest yeah. in it. Well, so. President, yes, ready? I am ready. I will move that the school board declare the property and building in the, of the old Junction School as surplus and put it on the market to be sold to the highest bidder and that the financial uh, administration will accept the bids of the property. I'll second that. Okay, so we have a motion by Nancy and a second by Wade that we're going to declare the Lynn School as surplus property and authorize the administration to put it to get bids and sell it to the highest bidder and take care of the legal. It's, is that everybody under and clear? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. That will be declared as surplus property. Thank you, Corey and Rod. Okay. Information items. Robert, you're on the agenda. You're not just behind the camera this I'm time. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and it looked better than it looked last night. There's actual stuff here. Yeah. <laughs> well, good. And um, Carrie, thank you for being my my Vanna. 
Okay. There'll be a few clicks at first, and then they'll slow down just a little bit. All right. So, on every two to three years, I need to present to you a little bit about E-rate and how we are, what we're doing to be compliant with the Child Internet Protection Act. Next slide. So, first of all, let me tell you a little bit about what what we're doing with some E-rate funds. Next. Um, so right now, it's not really technically E-rate. It's called the Emergency Connectivity Fund, the ECF. And it's a lot like the ESSER funds that the government's been providing. So we applied and we got um, granted $259,000 to put Wi-Fi on our buses. Specifically, the Emergency, Connect Emergency Connectivity Fund is for providing internet to students outside of their home, okay? Uh, sorry, outside of the school, sorry. It could be in their home, so we could send Wi-Fi's home, and we tried that. <coughs> we had 100 of them, and of the 100, we probably used about 30 um, over this last year. That grant has, has now passed, and we're gathering those back in. Principal said, yeah, we could use one or two for when we have games and stuff, but we're not, we're not really making it. So Jason and I came up with this Wi-Fi buses, and it's pretty good. You can pick. I think two clicks should get you to the next part. So like teams going to games can do homework and yes. do stuff. The 259000 buys the equipment and has a contract. Unfortunately, the contract ends in June of 2022. We are right now working on a small technical error of a service provider um, identification number that we've had to uh, apply for a switch because the information they gave me when I applied was not the correct information and now we're trying to switch. So we're waiting for that paperwork to go through. Then we can make the purchase and we get those installed. Um, and then we can determine after that if we're going to, which buses we're going to keep that, you know, depending on, I think they're going to allow us to apply for more funding. We'll be able to keep all the buses, Wi-Fi on all the buses. But if we have to make that decision, it's going to be game buses. It's going to be the bus that goes between um, Bear River Middle High School and Harris and Snowville. That one, I'm just critical. I definitely, Park Valley could use it, but they don't have that much data out there. But I've driven 84, and there's, there's enough data that students can do homework in that 30 minutes that they're going between Snowville and school. So I'm really anxiously going to push that. Here are two more projects. I don't have numbers for yet. We're going out to RFP. We're going to submit it this Friday. Um, the two projects are, first of all, we want to get, hang on just a minute, going too fast. <laughs> we want to get 10 gigabit speeds to every single access point in our district. Okay. What that means is and, and, and E-Rate is all about our network. So everything I'm talking about right now is improving our network. Currently, when you grab, you know, you get on the Wi-Fi, you are sharing one gig, because that's as fast as our pipe will, you know, allow data to get there. One gig <coughs> to that device. And you could have as many as 250 devices on one access point sharing one gig. So obviously, if we can increase that by 10 times, we're going to increase that data. We've already increased the number of devices in our schools prior to being able to increase this. So, you know, we've got one-to-one -one computing, Chromebooks in our schools. We, it's, it's mandatory that we get our wireless access sped up a little bit. Um, next one. So, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so our one-to-one -one requires this, okay? So that's the first project. We, I don't even have an estimate of what that's going to cost. We're going to go out to bid. It's required that anybody that bids on this has to physically come to a walkthrough uh, December 22nd and December 23rd. We're going to walk through our, all of our buildings, or at least most of our buildings, so that they know, oh, this one has tile ceiling. This one has a hard pan ceiling. It's going to be, you know, going to cost more, and they're going to have to pull this wire all the way back to our MDS. So that's that's the first major project that we're doing. We've been oh, we've been planning this for almost three years now. Um, How many access points do you have? Almost a thousand. 
not quite, but almost a thousand. So the next, the next phase of this, so we hope we can accomplish this in the next two years, and we have four years to do it. The next two years is mostly going to be hardware. So once we get all of that wire pulled, and, um, and that's really increasing the wire from a Cat5e to Cat6a, technically Cat6a just can push more data through it. Okay? <coughs> once we do that, we want to replace our switches because our switches is what is the, where all of the data comes in and it distributes that throughout all of our schools. And most of our switches are 10 to 12 years old. We do have some that aren't, because we've bought a few since I have came, um, but that will be the next part. We have, next slide please, we have 1.6, oh one more, we have 1.6 million at least in e-rate funds that we can spend. Now think of that as a total price. So let's say we spend a million dollars with, of the E-rate funds. We, we spend that money up front and we get reimbursed 700,000. So the reason that E-rate is so valuable to us is because we're gonna get nearly most of that money back and it increases our connectivity. Okay, so one more, sorry, I was one off there. So that's that last 1.6 million. One of the vendors told me it was actually 2.1 million, so 500,000, but I've seen 1.6, I haven't seen that. If they've increased it, then that's more than I know. That'll just be us a little further down the road, so. All right, so that's E-rate. That's what we can use to spend the money. Next slide. In order to get E-rate funds, we have to, um, we have to protect our children. The CIPA, or Child Internet Protection Act, came about in about 2000, and its main purpose is for schools and libraries to um, protect students from seeing harmful or getting access to harmful content while they're at the schools. Okay? So how do we do that? Next slide. Um, basically, we filter. We filter and um, there's, there's really two ways, right? A filter provides what's called a blacklist. The other way of doing it is, is a whitelist. A whitelist is basically saying, oh, this is a good site, I'm gonna let the kids go here. This is a good site, I'm gonna let the kids go here. And I've actually had parents tell me, you need to whitelist, you know, you need to provide a whitelist for the kids at the schools, not a blacklist. A blacklist means, I know this is a bad site, you're not gonna be able to go there. The problem with a whitelist is there are so many more good sites than there are bad sites that how can I tell the kids, well, you can't go to these other good sites. <coughs> so we filter using a, um, a service provider that basically has figured out which sites are the bad sites, okay, and they block them. Now, the problem is, of course, is that the bad sites are constantly changing their URLs constantly changing things. I have seen it change from the same name with a one at the, at the end to the same name with a two at the end, and a three, and a four, and it just keeps increasing. And they can change that, you know, by the second, and these sites just come rolling through. So the main thing is, is, is we have to try to block it. It doesn't mean that kids aren't gonna get to inappropriate stuff 100% of the time. With a whitelist, you can guarantee that they're never going to get to anything inappropriate. With the blacklist, you can't. But it's a risk that we, that we need to take because we need to allow our students to still be able to search and to research and to find things on the internet. That's the purpose of the internet, okay? Um, so we have to have policies in place, and we already have policies in place. We have an acceptable use policy that goes through basically saying, hey, if you're using email, or chat rooms, you know, don't do inappropriate things, don't send inappropriate pictures back and forth, don't use inappropriate words in those, um, don't hack the system, okay? One of the ways that, that students hack the system is by using a VPN client. They don't even know what it is, right? I, it is so innocent. I was so upset the first time as a dad that I found a VPN client on my daughter's phone. I'm like, oh my gosh, why 
is she doing? I go home, or I find it, and I pull her into my room, and I say, what, what are you doing on your phone? Because they have to check their phone into my room every night, right? She goes, uh, well, that's what my friend told me to get so I could listen to Spotify at school. Oh, and really, that's what most kids are trying to do. They're trying to listen to their music. So that's actually something that I've authorized that we open. We allow Spotify. We allow Apple <coughs> Music. We allow these, yeah, could they waste the time there? Yes, but at least it's better than the alternative. Now, if you take a trip out of the country, and as a teacher in the district, as a principal, even as a school board member, and you use your Google account that's associated with your email address here, we, we block you. I'm sorry, because anything coming in from outside of the district into our Google account could be something nefarious. Just, just know that. We do block that. Um, anyway, so... Okay, this is a good slide to be on. Okay, so we use iBoss, filters aren't perfect, let's see what else, um, oh, okay, I'm down at like the fourth bullet here. When I started in the district, by the way, it's been three years, I've been here three years, I gave Steve the opportunity prior to my, you know, my anniversary, but he said, I don't have any reason to get rid of yet, so, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here. I don't know, it's been a little bit. Yeah, have to exchange a little bit less stuff with me, so. <laughs> Oh, it's so great. Um, anyway, so when I first started, um, there is a threshold. You can set a notification threshold on the filter to somebody has to receive an email to say, oh, who's breaking the threshold, right? Well, that was completely shut off. And I thought, why, why is it shut off? So we turned it on, and within 10 minutes, I had over 5,000 emails in my inbox. Oh. Yeah, unfortunately, I did not go through every single email. I just mass deleted it. Um, so we had to mess around to figure out where we were at. At first, I was getting still way too many emails. Now I get just under, right about 100 per day. And I get an email if somebody hits the threshold where they're getting blocked, right, um, 20 times within three minutes. I get an email. My procedure is, is that when I get that email, um, if I get one, I'm probably not going to have time to research it. If I get two, three, four in a row for the same student, that, e that message is going to their principal. I look them up, I send them to the principal, and I say, you probably need to call the student yet. Okay? So those are things that we are doing right now, and that's a procedure. I really want it to go directly to the principal and not have me be the middleman in between. But right now, that's what it is. It is what it is. Okay. So um, how many students do we have to get in trouble with this on average? More than I, that I think we should. But um, if I were to do research on and investigate every single one that comes through every day, we'd have a whole lot more kids getting in trouble. I promise you that. So, but there's just no way I have time for that. Yeah. There's just no physical way mm -hmm. that I could do that. I, th I would, I would suggest that when we say in trouble, if you send a message to the principal, they bring the student in. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. Knock it off. They document it. Then the next time around, it yeah. will increase the severity. And, of the and it goes back to that policy, that acceptable use policy. Every student, in order to get on our network, to get onto a computer has to sign or agree to that acceptable use policy, saying, I am not going to go and look for inappropriate stuff on your network, okay? That's not necessarily, you know, always. So basically, the principal's in charge of enforcing that. Normally, that's what I do. One time, it was during the soft closure, I received three messages from, on one student, so I looked him up in Aspire, and I'm sitting there on my other screen, and there's his name, and there's his picture, and I'm like, that's such a good-looking kid. What's he doing? <laughs> Three more messages come in. And I look back at that, and this is not my procedure, this is not what I do, but I looked at that, and the home phone number just kind of, mm, there it is, and I dialed it on my phone, <laughs> and 
hello, is this the father of so-and-so? Yes. I said, do you know what your stu student is doing right now? Well, yeah, he's, doing cl he's in class. Um, he's in the living room on the couch. And I said, can you go and just kind of look over his shoulder and see what's really on your screen? Silence. You can tell he's moving. And then there's a gasp. And I've got to hang up. We have to have a talk. <laughs> so I'm sorry. It's out there. And I, I hate to be the one. This was not in the interview. This was not in the job description. <laughs> this had, I, I never knew that this was going to be part of my job. But here it is. So um, it's part of the filtering. It's part, part of there. Yeah. We have implemented something. And you know, I'm kind of seeing who else is in the room. We have implemented another feature of this, um, of iBoss. And it gives us the ability, so when the student types in a specific keyword, we know exactly what keyword they typed in. I can almost break that down. It's kind of, it's not in code, but it's, you can almost see when they're typing what letters they type and if they pause to try to figure out how to spell something, but you can see exactly the keyword. And I had to go through a list and pick which keywords are going to get flagged, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of those simple keywords are, you know, like bomb gets flagged, right? We have to know that. And sometimes you're just looking for bomb or jacket. Okay, no big deal, right? And you have to investigate that and figure out what are they really doing here. Um, so anyway, that is, that's how we're filtering. That's what we're doing. Uh, is it bulletproof? No. Are kids getting away with things? Probably. I hate to make any accusations and to send that to a principal to call that student in unless there truly is something that I say, yep, yeah, this is this is this is a problem. This kid needs to be, you know, have a talking to and get this stopped. Next slide. So we we probably go a little bit above and beyond what SIPA requires. Uh, it doesn't require us to track and to, you know, the internet use of minors. It doesn't require that, but because of the way the filter works, it creates a log, and I can look that up on that. Um, it only applies to us because we're getting those discounts through E-rate. And um, anyway, the rest of these bolts probably aren't as important, but you know, um, we have the ability to go through. We can find out a lot of information. Uh, I'm just going to put it that way. I've learned way more about investigating and about forensics and about destroying data on hard drives and recovering that data than I ever thought I would. Uh, but it's been fun. Last slide, please, Carrie. Uh, any questions for me on this? So this gives you a snippet, just a snippet of what we're doing every day. You may or may not have heard that in the last two days. So Monday, we had a problem with our iBoss filter. There are three nodes, two of which were down. And because two were down, it was like traffic jam on Interstate 15 where you have one lane and everything's coming down. So it just brought our network to, the, to its knees on Monday. Uh, we were able to get that resolved pretty quickly. Yesterday, there was another network problem, but it wasn't our problem or a problem that we could fix. iBoss wasn't our problem either, but we could fix it. This one had to do with Amazon. So oh, yeah. Amazon, Amazon Web yeah. Services hosts most all of our educational technology software. Canvas, Nearpod, I could go on, and every one of them was down. And so the teacher said, oh, the internet's down again. Oh, that IT department. Two totally unrelated things, but happened two, two days in a row that we had lost instruction time. And it was pretty frustrating. Um, we spent at least 30 minutes this morning just debriefing those incidents and what we could do to better improve that. And yesterday's, there was just nothing. And it took us a while to even figure out what it was to communicate that out to people. Because, you know, Amazon, and you guys know about it, right? Because it was in the news last night, but they weren't the How did Amazon get to be such an educational giant? It's, it's because they're, they're hosting so many different products. And, and, and I'm sure that they're hosting and that so many educational software uses these because they're getting the best deal, the best price. But the companies didn't, they don't really pay attention to who's hosting them. Or sorry, we don't pay attention to who's hosting them, so we had no idea that all our eggs were in one basket. 
but that's exactly what it is. So that may be questions that we have to start asking when we talk to these vendors. Who's hosting you? Oh, wow, we kind of want to go with this other vendor that's, that's you know, maybe using Google or somebody else to host, because everything is here. Yeah, Amazon's web services. And that hasn't happened for four or five years, so it's been a while. All right, that's more time than I plan on spending, but. Well, thank you. That was informative and it was very good. You've got a lot on your plate, so thank you for staying. You're <laughs> welcome. Care. Okay, Corey, back to you. Long-term capital outlay. Okay. <coughs> so in your board packet is the updated um, long-term capital committee plan or long-term capital plan. Um, it's broken down into five years from now, 10 years from now, and 20 years from now. And is a product of the long-term capital committee. So last Monday the 29th, we had the long-term capital committee meeting. And because of the, the nature of it, um, talking about the, the worry about potential enrollment increases, then that's why all of you received the information from that meeting um, and invited as a listening ear but not to participate. Um, so this, this is the same draft that was in there, just updated with the current dates and um, in several places we have the wording according to enrollment needs and or funding and enrollment needs because the crystal ball is very foggy right <laughs> there's a lot of construction out there there's a lot of, of building going on but it's really tough to know how many new students we're going to receive in this district because of, of that construction <laughs> so I, I could go through this bullet point by bullet point, but it's something that you had in your board packet to have an opportunity to look at. Would you like me to go through it item by item, or do you just have questions you want to ask me about it? I think we're fine if we just have questions. Does anybody have a question about it? You know, as I look at uh, the five-year plan, you know, it appears to me that we're 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 working on those things. Those things are very much a part of what we're doing. And so I would say that we're right on track. If anything, I think we're a little bit ahead as I look at it. But I appreciate what you do. I mean, I think it's important that we, you know, track what's going on in our community so that we kind of know. Um, so we don't get into trouble. We need to be aware of, of what's going on, which is why you know, school board members are encouraged to go to their different city council meetings and their different things is because we really need to be working in unison and, and understanding each other. And, and thank you. And as a, as a little continued information since that long-term capital meeting, uh, during that time we discussed that for the short term, the way that we would address potential enrollment increases is through purchasing additional portable classrooms. And so the next day after our meeting, I, contracted our, I contacted our construction <coughs> manager and told them that we would be looking at roughly six additional portable classrooms. Um, concerned about North Park and McKinley and Century Elementary specifically, but then also Box Elder and Barrymore High Schools. So because of lead times on construction materials and labor shortage right now, we're not confident that those could be built by next fall. But if we get those in the planning stages right now, then we would certainly have them for the, the fall after that. But crossing our fingers before then, maybe or maybe. Um, so just trying to plan ahead a little bit that way. And I think that appeases some of our citizens who are not necessarily trusting 
our, the direction that we're going. And so it, it kind of, it is a truth that we can tell them is that we're anticipating <coughs> needing some of these types of things so they know that we're not necessarily planning on having classrooms, you know, in weird places. Or like the street or, you know, the next door neighbor's house or something. <laughs> you know, we are truly trying to, you know, have them in a building that is built for the purpose of education. And, and no, no I've, I've not found anyone that lacks a portable classroom other than a teacher that wants it because there's air conditioning. Yeah, I was going to say. But, but really, it's not something that people are excited about, but it's a, it's a good short-term solution. And in our district, I think we really are in a good situation. Lakeview Elementary has the most portables of any school in our district, and they have six. Mm -hmm. currently. I, I hear stories about other districts that they build a brand new building and within the next year or two they have 10, 15 portables sitting out in the back just because of growth. So I, I think we're in a pretty good situation right now. Um, I'm going to keep tabs on this so that we don't purchase more portables than we absolutely need. In talking to Principal um, Eakins today, she indicated to me that there are many teachers who love to be in the portable because it, there's less distractions. And, and the portables that I've been into, and, and it, you know, they're, they're pretty roomy. And she said there's a lot of teachers that just absolutely love being in a portable. Yeah. And it's usually like a fourth grade class, not necessarily a kindergarten <coughs> class, but, you know, a, a fourth grade class. She, they feel like, she feels like there's a lot of teachers that really prefer it. Yeah, at Canyon Creek Elementary, which is in down in, by Farmington Station, it's the same model that we're building with Golden Spike. We're down there touring, and the, the principal, or I don't know, it's principal or assistant principal there, said that they have a certain number of portables, and they actually do a rotation every three years so that a teacher's not out there for more than three years and then they're back in the main building. So there are positives. That's a new enough school, but that's one of those examples of a new school with portables because of excessive growth. How many portables did you kind of say you put on order? So I, I told them tentatively six. You know, I could adjust that number down if need be. Um, and how much approximately? I mean, ballpark. Cost-wise, it, it depends. So, like. Bear River Middle School, where we put three portables two years ago, there wasn't any space on asphalt or concrete, and so we had to put them out in some grass and we had to build a pad out there. But if we drop them on asphalt or concrete that's already there existing, we don't have to build that part of that infrastructure. So best case scenario, we're looking around 100, 120,000 have them built and fully furnished all the way down. Yes, it is. <laughs> no plumbing. Now, these, these have no plumbing. <laughs> no plumbing. Um, all all it is is heat and air conditioning and All right. Well, thank you. That's that's helpful information. And I like I, I agree with Connie. I think we have been proactive in planning the best we know how and it's it's one of those like you said it's a crystal ball we can't like well let's plan for this and then the growth doesn't happen we can't do that but yet we can't also just wait till it all happens so I think you've done a good job of trying to anticipate needs and still be conservative with you know our, our money and our expenses so I appreciate that any other questions I would say too that I think as board members we need to be um, really conscious about how we speak about these kind of preparations and that there is a plan and that we don't need to be afraid of the future that this is this is well designed well thought through we're not going to be caught um, in a horrible state and our children are going to have a place to have an education and so I think that as board members just be very positive about what the school district is doing and be a part of that positivity, making sure that our, our voices are headed in that direction. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Corey.
Okay, monthly financial report, Rod. Yes, <clears throat> um, and I think that's a good point. Uh, let's try not to panic, okay? Yes. <laughs> As we, we were told that Golden Spike would be full before we had it built, we're going to have a lot of space in Golden Spike. Let's just say that. Uh, and often we hear people talking, getting all excited because they see a lot of houses and yet they don't have kids in them. So, um, as far as uh, our um, financial report goes, you probably remember, all of you, well, maybe you've got it all in escrow, but you pay property taxes at the end of the month, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. The school district received $26 million today in property taxes from this was one of your favorite the... Days. Yes, it was. <laughs> it's nice. It's amazing. So, uh, the, first, the first line there that shows property taxes shows we had only collected up a million dollars so far this year in, in our M&O fund and now that's going to, uh, after today, about half of that $26 million goes into M&O. So, so who gets the more. float on that since they were due on the 30th? Uh, they do, but, but a f uh, quite a few years ago there was a law passed. They have to pay us interest. So we get an interest penalty so no from them. So they pay us for the float. Nine days now. They don't get the, yeah, they don't get the float. We, we get a reimbursement on it. Um, we have some, just some yellow, uh, cautions in purchase services. We spent some S or two funds, uh, that I hadn't anticipated in the original budget. So we're a little high there. Um, we, our property insurance uh, has increased uh, quite a bit over last year. You can see, like everything, it's, things are going up. Um, the next yellow down in, on page three is, um, I planned on, I put the whole bus order in that, uh, school bus order, order for this current fiscal year in that account, but probably I'll split half of it down to another account and I just haven't done that yet. Um, other than that, we're about where we expected to be. Uh, you'll notice down on page six, I hadn't, back when I developed the budget, the uh, Bear River High School turf had not been uh, decided on, so I'm over budget in, in that athletic category, but that's the completion of the turf field and a couple oh, of other, other projects. We're still about the same. We've collected 160000 so far. We've got some promises uh, when the new, uh, that we'll get some more funds when the new tax year, when we change tax years. Um, So, and then we ordered some extra lunch tables because we we're social distancing, and so we spent more in equipment with that. And um, and and other than that, I that's all that I have in the in the. Um, if we're getting extra lunch tables, where are we putting them? The social distance. I'll just. On stages? Well, no, there's still room in a lot of the multi-purpose rooms. It's mm -hmm. just you, to, so you don't put as many kids on a table or, well, that's what we bought them for. We're not as concerned with social distancing as we were, but last year, but we bought, we ordered the tables, I think, last year when we thought we were going to need them. We were, st we were still social distancing yeah. when, we, when we ordered the tables. And there is still some goes on as we have hot spots, I think. Um, yeah, other than that, we're, we're staying pretty well within um, what the expectations are. And um, you got to 
you got to notice we did because it's been kind of a rough year and we came out pretty well on our on our finances for the end of the year we did do a little bonus to employees kind of a Christmas bonus so so appreciate your support on that okay any questions for Rod thanks Rod it's looking good I'm glad you're dealing with all the numbers. <laughs> Sometimes my head so starts swimming when I look at it. I like, I like equations and like all lists of numbers. Well, I like my household budget. I actually like doing that, but <laughs> that's just a lot. Okay, board committee reports. I know we've already talked about the long-term capital committee that we've had. Has there been any other committees that have met that need to report on what we've done? You've done? Um, okay. Well, I can talk. So Bridgerland, uh, they're building... So if you don't know, Bridgerland uh, got approved in the legislature and funded to build a brand new nursing uh, oh. building over on that campus. Oh, and, the, nice. and the plans are going and they're set to go and we've got to fill it with students because there's a desperate need for nurses in the state. So they're saying a year and a half, again with COVID and all, the building should be up and ready to fill with students. And where is that? Bridgerland in Logan. And so they're working, uh, they designed it in conjunction with Weber State, because Utah State and Weber State work in conjunction with uh, Weber's nursing program. And uh, anyway, so if anyone is interested in nursing in the next two years, send them to Bridge, because there's going to be some tremendous, the, the plans they've shown and the things that are just really cutting edge and really fun. It's going to be good so to be a tremendous facility. So with that, is there an application process to get in? I don't know. For the nursing, uh, you start off with like the CNA and the, the basic classes that we offer here. Okay. And then to become, so then you do have to go uh, through Weber or USU and Weber to, to go on to become uh, more than, to become a registered nurse. Oh, so, so the but, Bridger line is kind of the prep to the, yeah, the practical it's an MA, It's an MA, it's an MA2 position. And they turn out, apps, they actually turn out a beautiful product. Yeah. And, More so, and, and it's cheaper than if they were to go to Stephen Senator or something. They just turn out a really good product. And so with this, and with this new building, though, they're going to be able to increase their offerings so that they can get closer to having that four-year nursing degree. So it's 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 exciting. It's really really cool. So is it going to take them up through the LPM or just the MFM? I think it takes. I think it's going to take them through the LPM. I don't know. But currently, what we're hearing, but it's it's a an incredible deal for the money and it's going to help all of us okay. so. thank you all right let's move on to our policy review we have several policy well just two with no changes and then several in each of the first and second readings <coughs> um, do we want to take them no changes then first reading and then second reading I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, accept the policies um, noted here that have no changes. And I'll second. So we have a motion by Connie and a second by Brian to approve policies with no changes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let's look at the first reading. There are several there. Are there any questions? I have a question um, on 5260. Yeah. Um, on page 2, 8, um, it looks like it's not a complete sentence. Personal, personnel costs associated with activity. Maybe I'm not reading how it's supposed to interface. Oh, this is the one that goes clear back. Yeah, we have that. Yes, of because the, the sentence starts in B. It starts in B on, on page, page 1. <laughs> So, yeah, we kind of went, uh, this is not board a complete sentence. There on page one, the Board of Education will permit student clubs to be organized at the secondary level under the following restrictions. It was one, two, three, four. What was the number you said? Eight. 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 So, personnel costs associated personal with the activity. Personal, not personnel. Personal club, club costs associated with the activity. So, that will permit student clubs to be organized at the secondary level under the restriction of personal costs to be associated with the activity. That's how it's 
Well, and that maybe that goes no, that goes to four. Sorry, that goes under four. We did. We went through this. Well, this I think that was the one that we're talking about was an actually different policy. Oh, okay. Was it? Yeah, this one was the, the one policy. It was it went clear back, but I think this one was it under four. You would think it would four. go under four because that's the way. The school principal was participating. I mean, it. Yeah, I remember when we looked at this one. I can't remember what the. This was not that one though. But yes. I don't know. It just reads a little strange, so. Tell me again the two I I'm it's, I think we meant to say there are personal costs that they're, they're they need to state the personal costs associated with that. So on eight. So it's page two of um, fifty two sixty. Oh. Number eight. Oh, it goes under A four. That's where it all is. But did we get the numbering off? Because the principal has to submit the following information. And then it has to have the name of the club, what it's for, what it does. Oh, and then the, the personal cost. cost of yeah, so that should be like. Then, so that's supposed to be seven. That's, it should yeah, be seven under four. Off. I don't know. I just, it didn't read right, so. Yeah, I think that's, I think it should go right there. Right there. This, this number eight should go right there, is yeah. that Because those are the things the principal. Well, maybe, no, maybe it just all goes With the under. following information. No, I think that's where it should go. Yeah, okay. Recommended okay. club game, per get name, purpose, categorization, meeting times, personal costs. So I think that's where that goes. Yeah, so when you go back to the rest, it's in. Page number two, eight should go. Under 4A7. Poor Marcy. We're moving yeah. things. <laughs> she oh, she was trying to keep up with that meeting. That and, and then I have a, a question um, on policy 2070, the cash receipts expenditure and versus purchasing. It says cash should be verified. What What is that asking? What does that mean? I mean, does that look like hold it up in the light to see if it's actual? <laughs> it's not a fraud. I'm not, I was reading it, I was just wondering, what is that? Um, well, verified means that uh, you need to make sure that the, that the amount of cash you receded and deposit in the bank is... is that be verified by two people? Yeah. You need to add that? It well, has... It says, well, oh, cash yeah. should be counted by two individuals. That's it right. mentions that on below, but verified means that that uh, it should be, uh, that it should match what you've receded, typically. So that is a term that's like an understood term. I, I mean, I didn't know It may not be an understood term. That is. Turns yeah. out CPAs but, have their own language. We but <laughs> once, yeah, once again, we follow what our, what our attorneys send us. Yeah. So, so, uh, um, I could review that and see. Would you, would you mind looking at that? Tell us what verified means when. Print. Maybe I, yeah. Bring that back Maybe I could. Yeah. Which one I, I is just, it? If, if it's a if it's a professional term, I, I understand that, but I didn't understand it not being in that profession. So, but, um, another question I had was on policy. 20, I mean, 5294, student discipline and searches. Um, just a question in what it entails. If, it says, if I understand it right, it says that if the school has um, any concerns, they can uh, search a locker. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So yes. that um, students don't, they can't say that that's their. Yeah. Yeah. If, if there's a funny smell because somebody left their sandwich in there three months ago, we, we can go look at it, right? Yes. And we don't need a search warrant. Well, no. With with lockers, it's very okay. explicit it, that we, we, they're screwed up. I just want to make sure that. And then the other question I had is 5312, the non-school and private fundraising and donations. Is that, is booster, are booster clubs considered non-school and private fundraising or are they part of a school? 
Or booster club's part of school where it has, it has to be reseeded through the individual school. We have now made them, um, they're all part of the school process. They used to be separate, but now they've become part of the school process. Rod, would you agree with that? Sorry, say again. I was trying the, to find this other the, one. All the booster clubs, we're, we're running them through the school district. Yes. They used to be separate, but now we're running through the school district for the purpose of... We require that a booster club run their funds through the school district because it's perceived that they're part of the school district because they say we're the Box Elder, foot to ball, Box Elder High School football team booster. Okay, I, and yeah. so it used to be boosters didn't run through the school district and then we'd get calls from people saying how come you're letting them spend money on this? Or we actually had a call where the booster club rented a copy machine and then the president of the booster club died and the widow called and said, who's going to pay for this copy machine? Okay. <laughs> so we just decided we, we should own it if it's going to have our name on it. Yeah, but I just didn't get clearly which way it was, so I just wanted to know. So that's all the questions I have. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? <coughs> With that, I'd make a motion that we accept the policies on first reading with the um, clarification noted in 5260. I second that. So we have a motion by Karen mm -hmm. and a second by Wade that we approve policy on first reading with the clarifications that we noted earlier. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, second reading. Can I go back to that verified? I hadn't. It took me a minute to get to it. In the second sentence, it talks about where verification is difficult, cash should be counted by two individuals. Right. So it's when it's a lot of cash and, and a person, mm -hmm. then we encourage them to use two, two individuals. That. So that's why I'm like, is having yeah. two people do it different than verification? Because that, that was what I thought, verification having two people do it, and making sure that the deposit now, typically verification verification is like the receipts, making sure that it balances before you take it to the bank and having the receipts. So if you keep balance, cut, counting the money over and over again, you can't get the same amount twice, you need to have another person help you do it. Okay, any questions on second reading? I move we approve. Uh, all policies under second reading. I'll second that. Oh. Okay, so we have a motion by Brian and a second by Connie, <coughs> excuse me, to approve policies on second reading. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, let's move on to our book study. The chapters, we were, we're just finishing this up. Time to change, and I sent you out a couple of questions, and you can answer those or you could not. <laughs> it's your choice. It's just something to think about. I thought this was these were interesting chapters and a, a really useful, I guess, but um, the questions I asked were, what can we as leaders do when there's still some people resistant to change, even after we've done, talked about the why, the how, and the who, which was the first four chapters, so what are some of the do skills we need to get results? And then I kind of put an introspective question there, but you can share if you'd like. Um, on page 112, there's a graphic of these four transformational leadership skills, the who, what, not who, what, why, who, how, and do, and kind of gave examples. Um, what are you most proficient in? What would you like to improve? That, if you want to talk about that, if not. So those are the questions, and it's just if anybody would like to share um, what you got out of this as far as, I will just share one of the things is, I didn't realize that, um, I guess I kind of did, I didn't think of it this way, as doing being a skill, like, but you, I consider all those other things like skills, how do you persuade, how do you get people, and actually being able to when they resist, that's a skill. That's a skill you have to learn how to do. So I thought that was, and I thought it was interesting they had um, the resist protocol. It was actually called resist because you're working with people who resist and not what those things stood for. But I think the bottom line that came out for me was that, you know, as leaders you have to be accountable and make the change and be willing to hold other people accountable mm -hmm. to those things as well and in the best possible way you can. 
but it is that's a reason we can't just say oh you know you don't like this okay we'll we'll try to do it without you we still are if we've decided this is a district or as a school or, or whatever we're doing we are trying to if this is something we determined was a priority we need to make the change then we're not just going to say well it's okay if you don't do it so that's kind of what I got out of it can I add yes point? please so I enjoyed this because my, I struggle with how to get adults to do what I think they ought to be doing. <laughs> and so, so I really did enjoy this, you know. Uh, but it says, illogical resistance will eventually call leaders into a battle of will. This is a fight that the school leader must win. Because to allow resistor to operate in school culture in the midst of effective transformation is akin to sanctioning behavior. And I think this is the part where it talked about the older teachers that, ah, can you just let me float? Mm -hmm. and, and I hate confrontation, and, and I'm not, I don't do it well, but I think there's a point where you, this is the line in the sand, mm -hmm. and we have to stand up and we expect our people to do it. And if we let it slide, we lose, we lose the battle. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think if I could jump in really quick on page 85. Um, Right close to the bottom, right, right above where it says cannoli, there's a really nice statement. This peer pressure and the distaste of letting down a colleague will motivate a team player more than any fear of authoritative punishment or rebuke. And so one of the things that I know our principals do and what we do is, is we work hard on the why. Why, why are we asking this, for this, this initiative? Why, why, why? We collect the data. If we do this, you know, just like the letters that was discussed earlier, that, that program, if you do the work, you're going to get results. And ultimately, once you get your, your collaborative teams together, when you have the Y down, then that group will pull along those people that we just talked about. You know, I've, you've heard me say this before, and I actually kind of had a big um, reaction when I spoke to the... I believe it was new teachers, or was it the K3 and then 4 or 5? I've heard people classified as teachers as about 45% of them are thoroughbreds. And they are just out there running hard and they're going hard and you almost have to hold them back a little bit. Another 45% are, are, are work horses. They just, they just work hard. They, they're steady and they're, they just keep going after it and they just keep going. And the other 10% are a, another breed of, of in the in the uh, horse family, in the equine family. <laughs> I won't say in a public board meeting, but that's kind of become a little bit of a of a motto throughout. You know, don't don't be that that 10%. Get up here in a you know in a workhorse because we don't need everybody to be thoroughbreds. That drives me crazy. But if we have those work you know those workhorses doing the job and the thoroughbreds kind of cutting their teeth on some new things, then. That, and, and ultimately, we hope that we can have that culture of, of accountability that makes people want to, to be part of it instead of the principals having to hammer them to, to get them to do it. And that's much more effective, mm -hmm. and it really works much better. Julie, yeah. I wanted to go along with what the superintendent said. Um, when PLC first started, um, I remember we, we would get the first test results and, and see the data and everything. And, and you can see the teachers that were doing things well and those that were struggling. And I was amazed sometimes, I didn't even need to step in, that the team would come together and they say, okay, we need to help that person. Mm -hmm. and, and they would take it on themselves in a very encouraging, positive way to get their schools out. And in most cases, yeah. it would work in a very positive way. Yeah. So. Thank you. I have a, a comment on the on page 89 it says unfortunately while vast research has centered on accountability and steps that leaders should initiate when attempting to hold others accountable in reality few school leaders have received training on the scale of initiating and conducting tactical confrontations mm -hmm. it seems like um, superintendent tolman tried to do a little bit there uh, he did some he did a little training with us as board members mm -hmm. but i i'm curious if there's some uh, work we ought to do there as a district, if, if we fit, fit into that, you know, like everyone else, that maybe our leaders need a little bit of training on how to deal. Is it like Nancy said, That's I think hard. all of us, um, well, not all of us, some people like <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm well, dreaded going in. 
<laughs> in, interestingly enough, in each board meet, meeting this year, I'm taking a portion to talk about leadership, and tomorrow I'm actually talking about this particular chapter, uh -huh. and that's what, what it is, and it's talking about that. I, I do know in other districts, and we haven't done it here, is on page 88, it talks about crucial confrontations, and there's crucial conversations. There's a whole series, and that's something, you know, I think we need to look at, because I think in education, we are, are a, a people-pleasing group of, of people, yeah. and, it, and it is hard for us to, to confront somebody that's really not getting the job done, and so, you know, hopefully we're working on that, uh, we're, we're, you know, thinking about it, so I, I do think that's a, something that, that, that we are working on, and, and I found as I try to, to relate and help, help the principals and, and the people around me be better leaders, a lot of times I end up focusing on things that that I wish I was better at, you know, and, and so I, I've realized, and I'm much better now that I'm much older, you know, that, that, that I'm a little bit mellow, unless it gets to a certain point, then I'm really not very mellow. And so to be able to do it, to be able to do it in a, in a you know, a, a friendly way or, you know, at least a professional way to help those people come along is much better. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to answer maybe both questions in one, okay. and that is um, on page 85 at the top. It says, accountability has become a dirty word. People often associate accountability with images of big brother, micromanaging, hardworking educators while simultaneously disseminating insensitive repercussions for not meeting expectations. And I think that it's because of that stigma, mm -hmm. that would probably be the heart. You know, he says, which one are you good in, which one are you not so good in? Probably that is my not so good because there is that stigma that if you, and yet I know people that that's their that's their asset. They mm -hmm. can they can talk to you and probably tell you what you need to change. And at the end, you're you, you're motivated, want to. Right? Yeah, you know, you're just like you, so. Well, I think no child. I think no child left behind brought about the accountability yeah. with that negative connotation, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's put a, a, bad, a bad taste in educators' mouth for the last 15, 15 Plus years, I think it's right. Well, maybe even it's been 20 now we've had no child left behind, and so now it's the every student succeeds act, you know. So trying to, to, to do that, and so, and I and I do think it's a more crucial time now than it's ever been in education for our teachers to be successful. And we've got, you know, I hear some of my colleagues. I've been around a long time. Some of my superintendent colleagues say, you know, education used to be a lot more fun than it is now, but I I don't know if it's as if it was as crucial. Then, as it is now, it's so crucial because of you know the, of our society and situations that we do do a good job and that we help every student succeed. And so it it's important that we do this and and you know in our principals meetings we spend quite a bit of time talking about these types of things. You know they, they work with each other and, and I know they work they talk to each other. Keith's a great resource. He's constantly on the phone and and there's a, there's a lot of that going on when people aren't doing you know uh, I I look at all of our Classified positions, our, our uh, ESPs are uh, how we are working to help people become better at what they do. So it, there is a lot of work going on that, that we don't see, but it, it is a tough one. And I think it's, and this is just from a per parent perspective, like I fuss and stew a lot of times about like, oh, we need to talk about this and I don't want to have this conversation. And, <laughs> and but when I sit down and say, okay, I'm just going to be the parent, <laughs> I'm going to take and and I actually approach it without a like you're a dirty little you know I, and I sit down and I go, yeah. when talk. I don't react that's what you do before you yeah, yeah. but when I but when I react in, instead of act and 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 say okay and I and I, mean, I could just think of the time recently it wasn't a big deal but it was something I'd been stewing over I was like I just need to talk to him I just need to sit down and it was a great conversation and he agreed with 90% of what I said anyhow. I was so worried about the confrontation and I think that's true in a lot of settings. I think sometimes we're just so afraid to speak the truth and, and, and hold ourselves and others accountable and we don't want to come across as like, I know better than you or whatever. Now as a parent, I do. I want him to know that I know better than him. But, you know, but do you know what I mean? Like in a, in a colleague situation, I'm not going to go up to the superintendent and say, hey, yeah. Not okay, but you know, but there's, my boss, you can. But, I, but, I, but I want to do it in a way that's, that, do you know what I mean? Sure. And so I think learning those skills is, is valuable, so, yeah. Julie, can I mention yes. what I, and maybe it was just because of something that happened today, 
Um, I'm on page 114 and 115, and, and much of what you've said I, I thought was incredible, but I, I had an experience today. So at the very bottom of page 14, it says, all adults who work in the Greenfield Union School District have a responsibility to break them free. And what they're talking about is breaking these children free of this poverty cycle that you can see over here on, on, on 115. And, and we know that our teachers are learning the value of, of connecting with our students, right? Of going into their homes and, and, and getting to know them. And I think that's part of this, breaking them free from this poverty cycle that some of these children are in. But today, I happened to talk to a, a lady who has just very recently adopted three little foster children. And she, this has just broke my heart today. But she said, the three little kids that, that I have adopted, me and my husband have adopted, she said, <clears throat> they have never ever had a Christmas. Now all three of these children are in our school district. And she said, they've never had a Christmas because Santa Claus doesn't come to foster children. And so this year, her children are going to be able to have Santa Claus. And she told me, me and my husband, and she said, we went way overboard, but these little kids are so excited because someone connected, someone has taken them out of that poverty cycle. And she said, so our kids, our children now that we've now adopted, are going to have Christmas because they're no longer foster children because foster children don't have Santa Claus. They don't have Christmas. I was just, I was like, oh, it just got me today. So then I flipped to this page because I had just looked at that and I was like, I need to talk about that today. So, here's my Christmas message. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments or discussion? Julie, I need you to come to my house. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not qualified for that. My oldest is 15, so. <laughs> yeah, but his are furry and fluffy and running around. This is true. Two of those. Yeah, I can't control the dog. <laughs> Um, can I just say one more thing under board discussion? Yes. I have received several um, emails and phone calls just saying thank you for the um, one-time salary enhancement. And I just wanted to pass that on that it is recognized and appreciated. And, and hopefully um, our teachers and our uh, support staff know how much we appreciate them and recognize all the hard work that they're doing. Yes, we do. Thank you. Okay, now our book study, we finished this book study, and I believe that, did we order that other? I, I didn't. Oh. oh, you guys had a suggestion. Yeah. What was that? Can you How tell not me? to be a terrible board member or something like that. It's the one that what they did, they discussed at, at our training. Leadership Academy. Let me which, ask Marcy tomorrow. Okay. I think I might have. Okay. Because as much fun as this has been, I'm ready. I kind of like that one we'll that the uh, Principal Taylor bought. Oh, the way oh, it was really good. good. <laughs> and yeah, the yeah, fact yeah. you read a lot of yeah, it. Yeah, that's really good. That would be good. And the book Grit. I also think I think we'd enjoy reading Grit. Too. Okay, well. So you want me to check on this one? Check on that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 They, they recommended that. Yeah. That was at a workshop that several of us attended about. And, it was, and if there are small chapters, doable chunks, and something that's very applicable to us in our situation right now. So. Okay, on to our consent items. One thing I know with the minutes, we need to uh, amend this to say that Nancy was excused last week because she had talked to me I about. I really was. I she was. <laughs> I just have a me the memory of a snail. I don't know what because I. After you said that, I was like, Oh yeah, she did say that. <laughs> well, I had several people say, So I didn't know we missed you. Were you not coming? <laughs> oh, I thought I told. Rob, you have that? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I missed you all dearly, kind of, but anyway, not really. <laughs> it was a lovely. I would make a, a motion time. that we accept the consent items with that change. I'll second. Okay, a motion by Karen and a second by Brian to accept the consent items with that change. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, um, suggestions for future board meetings. I know that we've got the school fees coming up again for our second reading, and that will be interesting to see um, what kind of feedback we get about that. I'm interested in that. And then we have a pretty full January meeting. I was just going to ask, were we, did we mention talking about the AB schedule last week? Yeah, so we had a meeting 
after last board meeting we were going to table it and we met with principals, counselors, administrators, board members and decided it needed to be a longer discussion and need to take to the teachers and get some more more feedback and, and things like that. So that's kind of in the works. So we're not yeah. doing that right now. Yes. And one question. thing that I, from that same meeting that I've had a couple of teachers comment, uh, ask me, we did decide in that meeting that it would not be instituted in next school year. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, just, just so that that maybe is on the record, if it does change, it would not affect next school year. Yeah, it's got to be, we need the, a, because we'd have to have that decision by now or January at the latest, and we just don't have time to get what we need for that. So yeah, it wouldn't take place until 23. <laughs> I can't keep track of years, so yes. Thanks for bringing that up, though. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just, not on future board meetings, but upcoming events, are we still doing the December 13th? Yes. Um, yes. I, I have never got a hold of the third gentleman, but I will double check with the other two just to make sure. And that's at 5.30? Yes. On Monday. And we're so, oh, I won't be there. Right over here. You won't be there. So, uh, <laughs> do we have anything in particular that we're asking from our district um, just to get to know you? What? I know that it's always good. That That's when we have to hear. So, if there's something particular for our district, if we're all on the same page, it helps. Well, I, I do think, you know, I'll, I'll have the uh, JLC's uh, pamphlet. I, I don't have that right now, but I'll get that, make sure we have that, highlight that. You know, thank them for last year's. Um, WP and Greece and you know, all their support for the ESSER funds and, and, and all that. And so, I think, and then I think. You and I had talked a little bit last, at the end of last meeting um, when Brigham City came and presented and said that um, the legislature had given them kind of a pass to extend, I mean, was it like four or five year from it, financing um, projects? Yeah, and that, right. I think that was unfair to the districts yeah. because they, I mean, they didn't even tell us that they were extending them. So that would be a good discussion. Oh, finance. when the, they came and get their yeah. yeah. product. Oh, yeah. I remember that. that and so. has Marla, have you talked to Marla Young? She said she needs to meet with us. Okay, I have on not. Redistricting. Redistricting. I have, not. I, have you, Rob, by any chance? I haven't. Okay. Uh, well, I did uh, talk to her and she said she was working on it. That was clear back in the summer. I well, said, what's going on with the redistricting? I ran into her just before we left, and I said, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. Am I going to miss that? And she said, oh, no, she had other things, but it would be the first part of December. So I had one. Well, we definitely, that. because next November is it has election. To be, it, has to be yeah. elect, it has to be the yeah. county commissioners. You know what's driving the, the redistricting? Oh, it's the, the census. Ten, it's the 10 year census. It's a census. It's the 10 year, we, we were involved in this before. Uh, so that at every 10 years when they reallocate and we see where everybody's living and what they are, they have to make the appropriate changes. Mm -hmm. So they try and keep, so particularly for school boards, they try and keep all of our districts with about the same number of people, oh, okay. so which is why Tiffany represents then... lots of jackrabbits. <laughs> Trying to keep not area. <coughs> no, it's not it's not geographical area, but it's they want each of us to represent a similar number. Of so the census drives that, to eat. and that needs to be done before because like people okay. file in March. March. Yeah, but so I think, I think the county commissioners have to approve it. Okay. January. Do we have? What do we have well, to do she, in that process? Well, so was it you Connie think? and I were? So ten years ago, we met with her, and she just wanted to know where we all lived to make sure as they drew the lines and all that we were in the appropriate places yeah. so that nobody got cut out. Well, that happened once in North Summit. They moved it one block and we had no control over it and somebody lost their position. Oh, yeah. really? So, that's, that's so that's and that can happen. happen. But she she said, when I, like I said, we were standing in the grocery store, so it was okay. a detailed, detailed. <laughs> I'll, I'll, but, I'll, I'll um, reach out and see what. Well, she just said what she's, what they're really anxious, as Connie has mentioned, the growth. Um, if we know what growth is happening in our areas, in our in our district, okay. because I know you, I mean, I think Brigham's got double the numbers that Tremont has from what Keith said us at that meeting on Monday. You got anyway. We got like 760 applications this year, and you guys are like 360. 
So she wants to know if we know, you know, from just being in our area, what areas are being developed and who's what and where, and just so they can kind of get a, a heads up. You don't formally need to approve anything. Just no, we have just no, a, we have no right. Information sharing. Yeah, it's yeah. just to see. And, and just a heads up, um, this was in the paper I think, last week that for those that are running this paper time, that the sign up is on Monday, March 7th, starting at 8 o'clock, and it ends on Friday, March 11th, 5 p.m. Who is that? That's shorter. That's myself and uh, well, okay. Karen. Karen and Joanne. Three, three this time? Three. Yeah. So we have four so last time. Yep. And then the USBA conference is January 6th through 8th. So that's right before our next board meeting. That's down in Salt Lake. Did you all get the email invite to the Zion Bank? Uh, I came today. Maybe yes. you got like an email to. I have never seen that before, but maybe in the past they have. But we, to we are RSVP. We're trying to arrange dinner Thursday night. Thursday night. So I think we'll. I got to check from Marcy. I okay. she was working on that. She probably has it. Thursday night. Okay. And then and our. I, 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 I'm sorry. Julie, no, you're um, fine. I could, might probably need everybody's help on uh, Friday morning to hand out candy bars. Setting things on tables. A little early. And uh, there is going to be a primary because there's three people running. So there will be a vote and they will announce it let's see, Friday night. And then the next day, whoever is in the finals gets to give another little speech. And then they'll vote until they get it. Okay. Well, so, I'm ready to help. So I'm going to hand out candy bars two days <laughs> if I get past the primaries. Yes, yes. And we're counting on it. A lot of schmoozing. A lot of schmoozing. Yeah. That goes yeah. a long way. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> our game's running. You got to consider. I'll talk to. You should have Keith uh, introduce you. Yeah. Truly, truly, truly. It's a for sure. Okay. On if you will notice that we do have that Monday the work session meeting with the legislators on Monday, December 13th, and then next board meeting is Wednesday the 12th, so. That's at 5.30, right? 5.30, yeah. It is. All right. So, any other motion? We adjourn. Okay. I second that. Okay. I'm exhausted. Karen's moved to adjourn. Wait a second. All in favor.